tickets tonight. Extra bleachers brought in and a frenzy. The biggest on campus Rutgers game in at least 137 years since they took on Princeton in that very first college football game. Rutgers 8 0. Louisville, well, they were the host in a game very much like this a week ago. They took care of business, knocking off West Virginia. They climbed to number three in the BCS, and all eyes around the country, if you're a fan of the SEC, the Big Ten, the Pac 10, Texas perhaps, wanting to see how Louisville will respond here on the road against an undefeated Rutgers team. Well, if you're a fan of college football, you're a fan of this game because this game has BCS implications. And whether you're a Louisville fan or you're at home, Saying, let's go Cardinals. And Chris, as you said, you're a fan of one of the other one loss teams. You are interested to see the result in this Big East clash after last week's game with West Virginia. Greg Shiano's Rutgers players have never been in a game like this. Louisville's had their collisions that have meant something before these players, of course, lived with the hype and conquered it against West Virginia last week. Rutgers ranked at number 15 in the AP. Never been ranked higher than that. Never played in a game involving two ranked teams. Think about that. That's why there's this atmosphere here tonight. Are they up to it? This defense that's allowed no one to score more than 20 points in any game. Great at pressuring the quarterback, but they haven't faced an offense even close to as good as Louisville's. Well, I think the, the thing that I really noticed last week, seeing a healthy Brian Brom, is that Louisville's offense can get on the field with any defense in the country and have a chance to execute. And it's going to be a challenge for the Scarlet Knights. I know that's their strength. They play great defense. They're going to have to feel the energy from this crowd to have a chance to slow down the balance from Louisville's attack. They, they go well over 200 yards rushing and passing, and that balance is tough to stop. Does it surprise you that uh, Rutgers won the toss and wants the football right away? No deferring to the second half. They say, give us the football. Perhaps a chance to chew clock right away. They've been a very good first quarter team and more importantly, keep Brian Brown well, off the field. I think it plays right into the hands of Greg Schiano and what he wants to do as a head coach. He he's talked about a vision and Aaron Andrews talked to him about it before the game. I think they're welcoming that by saying, we'll take the ball. We're not going to hide. We're not going to be afraid of Bobby Petrino and the fact that they obviously want the ball first. We'll take the ball and we'll throw our team out there to see what we can do with Mike Teal, who I think, again, is going to have to have a big night throwing the ball. Needs to get off to a very good start. The young quarterback, I think, to give Rutgers a chance in this game. Well, they need help from that offensive line, which has played so well, and Ray Rice, who averages more carries than any running back in the country. Is Rutgers up to it? Their crowd certainly is. Todd Flannery to boot it away for the undefeated Cardinals. It's Willie Foster and James Townsend deep for the undefeated Scarlet Knights. What a scene. Very short kick. It's taken at the 12-yard line. Rutgers looks like they have a fake reverse on. And cutting inside is Townsend. Louisville's coverage seemed not really fooled, and the Knights will start at the 20-yard line. It's a Rutgers team built around the running game, and the guys up front are very, very important. Pedro Sosa and Zuda, NFL-bound tackles. The coaches here believe the guards have been a pleasant surprise. This offensive line will be tested tonight, but it's, it's the strength of this team. You know, a lot of teams have tried to stop Rutgers and Ray Rice by putting eight or nine guys at the line of scrimmage. I think Louisville will do that tonight. Puts a lot more pressure on the offensive line, although here they're coming out the four wide receiver set on the first play. It's the senior Brian Leonard to the right of Teal. And they motion Clark Harris the tight end back in a split formation. And Teal's going to throw long in the first play. Had a man overthrew him. He was looking for Kenny Britt, the talented true freshman who had a step on William Gay just overthrown. I love the call by Greg Schiano and his offensive coordinator, Craig Versteeg. Not only do they take the ball, which is surprising, they're going to go at one, one back, four receivers, and they're going to challenge the best corner on Louisville's team, William Gay, and he had his man open. It was just a matter of trying to convert. But great call there to challenge this Louisville defense. What's the call now on second and ten? It's Leonard, the setback. And the senior gets it. Cuts back. Has a crease. Fights forward and has a first down. This is Brian Leonard who's taken a back seat this year as Rice has gotten the lion's share of the offensive duties. 
but he's become a much better blocker, very good receiver. They will challenge a Louisville defense that makes some changes up front. You've got Cox and Grady that look for a more physical defensive line than what they typically start. And the defense, uh, you know, we just talked about up front. Okoye will have to have a big game, 91. He played so well last week against West Virginia's offensive line. And right there, the Rutgers hit a crease. And now it's the first carry for Rice. Running left, has a gap, and is slammed to the turf by Preston Smith and Latarius Thomas, but a nice gain for Rice. Rice is the sophomore out of New Rochelle, New York. That's suburban New York City. A couple of tight ends, and you get a really good indication of how many white jerseys are up at the line of scrimmage. You're talking about eight or nine guys up inside the box, and yet still Ray Rice is able to find the crease there and pick up six yards on first and ten. First down yardage crucial for Rutgers. Rice motion at the top of the formation. He's a wide receiver. Ruville pays attention to him. Finally, they go inside the brick. The freshman, a flag flies as he gets first down yardage across the 40. This is the big recruit, the 6'4", 205-pound receiver out of Bayonne, New Jersey. Face mask, number 27 on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Gavin Smart guilty of the penalty. Britt. Only has two catches coming into this game, Kirk, where they see intent on involving him. Yeah, I, I really am impressed right now with, with the way, and it's very early in the game, the way they've decided to attack with Mike Teal. Mike Teal's the question mark on this offense, but they have decided to, instead of hiding from that and waiting till third down, put the ball into his head, put the ball into his hands early in the game and give him a chance to be successful on easier passing downs. It's Britt in motion. Teal hands to Rice. Rice bouncing straight ahead at 5'9", 195. You see the straight ahead strength of Rice. Brandon Sharp, the safety on the stop. And the thing about Mike Teal that I've noticed in studying him and getting ready for this game, and there it is. When you're 23-0 and at Don Bosco Prep, one of the better high school programs, not only in the East Coast, but throughout the country, tells you a lot about his attitude. Back-to-back -back state titles in New Jersey, great high school football in New Jersey. Overall, now 33-1 and as a starting quarterback here at Rutgers and going back and looking at his high school days. The only loss to Louisville last year. So he is a winner. Tonight, they're giving him a chance. He's improved his decision making a lot because he's had a lot of interception problems in his career. Here he flips it over the middle, incomplete. Coaches love Teal. I mean, they say he is a winner. He knows how to perform under pressure, but he's a little bit uh, eager sometimes to try to make, you know, fit the ball in there, make a decision. And last year, as a, as a freshman, had a lot of interception problems. Right. This year, he's cleaned it up a bit. He threw 10 interceptions last year, just over, over 100 attempts. You're talking about 10% of your throws that are intercepted. A lot of that is just youth and inexperience, maybe trying to force some things, predetermine where you might go with the football. But it, this will have to be his best game of his career for them to be able to move the ball against Louisville. His first pressure situation on third down. Third and seven. Pressure up the middle. He was hit as he threw the ball and batted away incomplete. So Louisville brought the blitz. Teal stood in there, but took a shot as he let the ball go. Well, Louisville is a zone blitz team. They like to bring pressure. That time, Nate Harris came right up the middle. And I think there was enough confusion on the offensive line. They were able to get to Teal before he was ready to throw. He had an open man downfield. Part of Rutgers component, a good punter. Joe Radigan, the senior, second in the nation, 46 yards a punt. And back deep is Trent Guy, who took one to the house against the Mountaineers a week ago on a short punt. Radigan unloads a high, deep kick that Guy will let bounce, and it's going to head into the end zone. Touchback. 50 yards on the punt. So Rutgers, an impressive start to the drive. It stalls, and Louisville's first possession will start at its 20. When we come back, Brian Brown will go on offense. Rutgers and Louisville scoreless. I mean, the city is embracing the Scarlet Knights. It's exciting to see the East Coast embrace college football. Colby Smith, the setback in the I formation. Louisville's first play of the night. It's a play action fake, and Brown wants to fire deep over the middle. Has a man open, and Douglas collects it inside the Rutgers 35. Ball pops loose. They're saying down, no fumble. 
No fumble. It's a catch and a completion of 45 yards on Louisville's first play to silence this big crowd. So successful in first down throws last week, Kirk. Well, that is one way to silence a crowd, and you have three receivers. Douglas works to the middle, and it's tough for Rencart, the linebacker, with two, two safeties in the middle of the field, Chris. It's up to the linebacker to try to stay with a third receiver, and Douglas just too much speed for him. He outran him, and a great throw by Braun. He feared that the ground caused that fumble. On second down, Brom throwing again over the middle, incomplete, a flag is down. Prior to the snap, false start, number 68 on the offense, five yard penalty, and he's first down. And you got George Bussey, the tackle. He talked about the confidence of this Rutgers defense, and they certainly need, need a boost here. The Louisville offense, it was Arudia and Douglas, each with six catches last week. Barnage, the tight end, got shut out by West Virginia, first time in a long time. And Arudia and Douglas going over 100 yards receiving each against West Virginia. So it's a team that uh, gets the ball downfield in a hurry, as they did on that first play. First and 15 after the penalty. It's Colby Smith. He's strung out and smacked to the ground. And Terrell fires in the linebacker for Rutgers. They're on the stop. The Scarlet Knight defense, number two in yards allowed, number two in points allowed. Very quick, undersized. You know, Foster only 260. Meekins only 275, but they're very active. Very active, and if you, as a fan at home, I want you to watch Rutgers' defensive line and how much twisting and stunning they do on almost every play. They barely got set before the ball was snapped. Brock Bowen, the fullback, was dropped for a loss. One of the reasons they have to move as much as they do, Greg Schiano knowing that he doesn't have a lot of size up front with his defensive line, and going up tonight against Louisville, he's giving up not only size as far as the height, but look at the difference in the weight. And that's why you have to take some chances. Take, take a little bit of risk, move your defensive line to the left or to the right, have some stunts, take advantage of the quickness of the undersized defensive line. The Knights believe that they will show defensive speed that Brom has not seen before this year. They played Miami. On third and long, Brom has plenty of time. Fires over the middle. It is complete to Arudia, who has a first down inside the 25. Another on-target throw by Brian Brom. Courtney Green there on the stop, 16 yards. Continuation of what we saw last week when Brom just carved up West Virginia. So efficient. And Rutgers, after first driving near midfield in its first possession, this is what they were afraid of. Louisville landing the big blow in their first play, 45 yards, and then a nice conversion on third down. What a scene here. But Louisville could quiet them all down if they could find the end zone here. Uh, now, now that Louisville is able to move the chains, look for them to attack on the first and ten. They've had a lot of success throwing the football. It's Smith straight up the middle, running through arm tackles and crawling to the 15. He gets eight. Smith, the ball carrier. Well, they, they, Chris, this time they're they're lining up in a three receiver set. They're moving the tight end that time to get in position. It's all about blocking angles. And Eric Wood, their center, one of the best in the Big Second East, able to get to that second level and just a nice push. And the fact you have to almost guess with Louisville's defense with the run and versus the pass and the balance that they have it makes it tough on a defense to know what to expect the next play. Smith again. That's right. Gets hammered at the 10, but will set up a first and goal for the Cardinals. Colby Smith, the guy replacing Michael Bush, who broke his leg way back in the Kentucky game early in the season. Such a shocking injury for this team, and Colby Smith took a long time to kind of adjust to the starter's role. He said he was really pressing. First down and goal. He's been to his own the last couple yeah, of games. Now that he's been more in instinctive, one of the other things that's helped him is number 42 coming into the game, the true freshman who's in now. Anthony Allen has much better size once they get inside the 10-yard line. Allen had a couple of touchdowns against West Virginia. 225 pounds out of Tampa. And a fly. Yeah, it's not just the passing game in Brown. They have different weapons in the backfield. Even though Bush goes out, you got Smith. You've seen Allen. Fire to the snap. 
I'll start. Number 81 on the offense. I've got a penalty. Scott Kuhn, the tight end, jumped offside. We haven't seen George Stripling yet, but we will. Three different kinds of backs for Braun to use. Yeah, they've got a great versatility, but the thing that you love to see out of Michael Bush is that even though he is out for the year, still heavily involved in getting this team focused. He's a roommate of Colby Smith, has been in an inspiration to this team despite the injury. So first and goal from the 15 after the penalty. That's Douglas in motion. Braun again, plenty of time, dumps it short to Douglas across the middle. Being chased down by the linebacker, Brandon Rankert, and dragged down at the three. So immediately, the speed of Harry Douglas finding creases in that Rutgers defense. Well, they're also doing a good job of just clearing out the zone. Great time here. What they do is they just simply clear out and then come underneath. You have your tight ends that are just doing their job as far as trying to get vertical. And look how the defense runs downfield with Kuhn, leaving a huge vacancy underneath, underneath for Harry Douglas to step into. Second and goal at the two. And after the big freshman who powers to the end zone, touchdown. Anthony Allen, right where he left off against the Mountaineers last week. Allen, the ball carrier for a loser. And Shiano's defense marched on as Petrino's offense goes 80 yards in eight plays in about five minutes. That's one way to start off a, uh, a ball game when you rank third in the nation. You're on the road. There's a lot of pressure. Rutgers' biggest home game in the history of the school. You stop them, force the punt, get the ball. And drive 80 yards in eight plays. That's textbook on how you play on the road with pressure. Art Carmody still perfect on point afters. 40 for 40. And Brian Brom in that opening drive, 3 for 3, 74 yards. He got off to a great start with a 45 yard completion. Allen finishes the drive with a two yard touchdown. in yesterday from Newark, the airport. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. <laughs> you get some traffic now. That's when 37.8 can take an yeah, hour and a half. That was Connecticut border not too far away. The point is, with, with that many people in this much you know, close proximity to the campus, there's plenty of prospects and players, and this is fertile recruiting ground, which Shiano has tried to emphasize and is starting to do so with a lot more success. We'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Gr great point about the two-hour radius from this campus and how many high school football players are in this area. Flannery boots it to James Townsend, and he fights forward. We'll see what Rutgers can do in their second possession. Brown's already put him in a hole, and you know maybe confidence affected this Rutgers defense again. They've, they've really allowed no one over, over 20 points, Kirk, but this is a new thing yeah. for them. And the, the, the gentleman in the red shirt, the coach, the quarterback coach, Jeff Brom, is the older brother of Brian Brom. He will not let up. He is relentless, not only on the whole offense, but especially the guy right in front of him, number 12. We, we'll talk more about that throughout the game, but he, he and his younger brother have an interesting relationship, and it's been that way since he was about six years old until tonight in this game. Yeah, Brian was funny on that. Fly flies as Rice takes the pitch and bounces off the left side. You see a lot of number 27 if Rutgers can stay close. The game plan is ruined if they get way behind, and Louisville helps them out with a, a third five yard penalty already in the first quarter. They've been so good at jumping on top of teams early. 58 to 7 and I think that as much as anything gives them confidence. That's why you wonder how they'll respond to Bobby Petrino and his team going down the field 80 yards eight plays and a touchdown. They're used to being on top and we even talked about before the game started how important it was for them to after losing last year 56 to 5. They need some confidence. They need some success early. This is big this drive right right here to see how they respond to getting down by seven. Brian Leonard back in the game on first and five. The teal drops straight back, fires over the middle, overthrown, intercepted. It's intercepted by Gavin Smart. He was looking for Taekwon Underwood, and that is the ninth interception of the year for Teal. The ball is thrown to the inside, allowing Smart to make the jump on the ball, and he does a good job of playing the ball. And this is your fear if you're a Rutgers fan, is Teal gets back, puts the ball where he thinks his receiver is going to make a tighter angle to the middle of the field. And Underwood didn't come towards the middle of the field. He went more upfield vertically. 
very simple for Smart, who had his eyes on the quarterback, to step up and make the pick. Rutgers defense really has to step up now. Kobe Smith in motion to the top of the formation. Brian rolls. Gets pressure and throws it away. Early urgency for the second ranked defense in the country. Brian Brom's strength is not rolling around outside of the pocket. It's sitting in the pocket. First play of the drive, last the last drive, the opening drive, right downfield to Douglas, finding your Rudy underneath or downfield in a seam, and then finding Douglas underneath. He was three for three. Accuracy is his greatest strength. And now that his thumb is fully recovered, let's keep an eye tonight on how many pass attempts that he makes and how many completions he has. He's one of the more accurate quarterbacks you'll see in the nation. Pump fake hands up to Smith. He's stopped for a loss. That's that quick, undersized defensive line we talked about. William Beckford, Floridian, one of many in this roster, only 230 pounds, but you see the quickness. Chris, this is this is an opportunity to see how the movement this time put him right into a position of making the play. He comes underneath. And the movement sometimes takes you to the play, sometimes takes you away from the play. And that time, it, it did a nice job of putting Becker right there where he could make a nice big tackle and set up third down. And third and 13, Brom, again, well protected. Flips over the middle, intercepted. Intercepted by Devon Thompson, the linebacker, still spinning into Louisville territory, out of bounds inside the 25. And that's a defense stepping up when they really had to. Not just stopping the possession, but setting up the offense now. But it's a great job of getting pressure on Brian Brom. He got pressure from his left side, and I think it affected his throw, and it allowed the ball to come down to Thompson, and Thompson does a good job of not only making the catch, but also doing a good job of running with the ball. That's just getting pushed right back into the pocket. The defensive pressure, Westerman, the defensive lineman, didn't actually get to him. He just pushed Foster right back in to Brian Brown. So Teal will throw on first down. Byers all the way to the touchdown. Tyquan Underwood. Just a lightning quick turnaround in this game as Brian Brom gets an earful from big brother Jeff about the interception. Uh, he's been doing that since since Brom stepped off the field after the interception. But kudos to Rutgers for taking advantage just exactly what they needed to get back into this football game. Sudden change, their defense steps up, gets the interception back. And how about Mike Teal, after having a horrific throw, steps right in, makes the big throw to tie this game up. Jeremy Ito tacks on the extra point. So Brom will go back to work. But now it's a 7-7 game, and the Rutgers house is rocking again. They're strong. From Midtown Manhattan, as Rutgers. Striking quickly. About four plays ago, Louisville had a 7 zip lead in the football after an interception of Teal and a very poor throw. Suddenly, the defense gets it back, and he makes a gutsy throw. That's exactly what had to happen for Mike Teal in this offense has had some success like that and getting the ball down the field. At the end of the day, Teal has to make enough plays throwing to guys like Underwood to go back to their bread and butter, which is the running game. And by throwing, that sometimes can open up those running lanes. Jawan Spillman runs it out of the end zone for Louisville, has a crease. Beats the kicker and takes it to the house. No flags. And a huge gasp from the sellout crowd. Louisville's return game had given him nothing all season long until the West Virginia game. Until when you guy start, took, guy, <laughs> we start killing their special teams. You start teams. killing them. You know, the last two weeks we've seen them. They've been the best special teams in the country. Trito had a good thought, though. Law of averages. Sooner or later, we got to make a play. Yeah, I want you to watch number one talking about making a play. Ito, I think he's trying to turn him back to the middle of the field, but my friend, you've got you got to close the gap there a little bit, make a little bit of an effort. I, Spillman has such great speed, but once he got out into the open, 
lane. It was uh, it was almost just tough to watch that poor kicker in the open field try to make that play. It's blocked the extra point. And they pick it up. It's Stripling trying to run it in the end zone, and he gets in. Well, Rutgers kind of fell asleep after blocking the kick. And Stripling able to run it in the one point conversion. So, first of all, a, a, a nice job. And it's Allen, excuse me, the freshman who scored the touchdown earlier, picking it up and taking it in. There's so something heads you'll up see special every day. teams play again. We've had a lot of action here the last. Uh, Last couple games that have happened fast, and right now we're in the middle of it. I, I'm surprised to see everybody from Rutgers. Grab the ball, fellas. Gets, just following it. Gets out of the way. And you know, that's sometimes an instinct because you're so used to, like, on a punt to get away from the football. But that time, they get away from the ball, and Allen looks around thinking, I'm just going to pick it up and take it into the end zone, and ends up con converting for the Cardinals. So a mental mistake from that Rutgers special teams unit. And now it's a 15-7 game. Another look. So the big block by Ramel Meekins, who had good penetration, but then they just kind of move out of the way. It's Frierson. Frierson. Yeah, Frierson just kind of even motioning to the whole defense, just everybody out of the way, out of the way. And what it allowed was Allen just to step up and, and pick up the ball. And now back to the sidelines, big brother, quarterback coach with Brian Brown now he's trying to pick up the pieces after he pretty tough on him after the interception now he's okay now we go now we go now he's trying to get his his swagger back I think he was just frustrated with his decision obviously on the pick but boy what a what a change of events back and forth could happen next year Flannery to kick off and it's a short one once again James Townsend mishandles it momentarily and is forced out at the 16 yard line well, even though it happened just a few moments ago, I want you to look at the, how many people are up front for this Louisville defensive line. Nine defensive linemen are up tight. The reason that's important is they're trying to stop the run. But look at the middle of the field. That's why Teal has a chance, if he has time to throw, to get one-on-one -on -one opportunities against the Louisville secondary. The last time he was on the field, he was able to execute. Now let's see if that slows down some of the pressure from Louisville. Had nine offensive plays, Kirk. Six have been passes, which goes strongly against the pattern. Now they go back to plan A, and it's Rice who's collared by Malik Jackson. The Sam linebacker flew in there and horse collared the running back. Well, I think that's what that's what Louisville and I think anybody else who plays Rutgers wants to see is do they have that kind of balance? They came into the night's game averaging 193 yards on the ground, 12th in the nation, with the third leading rusher in the country, only 128 yards through the air, 114th in the nation. If you're playing them, you're going to put everybody up to try to stop that running game. Rutgers still has confidence they can run on anybody, but that'll be tested tonight. The blitz is picked up. Teal has time over the middle, incomplete, and laying a huge lick on the receiver was Brandon Sharp. Flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Junior Sosa. Watch the hit by yeah, Sharp. Well, they're, they're trying to get the ball to Underwood. And again, opportunity one-on-one. -on -one. Boom. I think he dropped the ball because he knew what was coming. You come across the middle against any good defense, and you have to be ready to protect yourself. You know what's think, coming. You better look up and grace, man. <laughs> and, and Underwood, I think, knew that he had a safety, and Brandon Sharp closing in on him. The ball actually went through his hands before Sharp even had to hit him. Right side of the game is Leonard, the setback. There's a blocker on this third long, and it's caught by Underwood. Well, the young guy bounces right back, takes the big blow, but makes the third down catch before Gay forces him out. Gain of 12. Good toughness. Get lit up one play, come right yeah. back, make a nice hands catch the next. Yeah, and, and he is he has shown some toughness. The ball came loose after he made the catch. I was surprised to see how quickly they said it was a completion, because watch the ball come flying out. And now an official has run in and right. overruled the initial call incomplete. It's a tough angle there. This will be a better angle. You'll see. Let's, I just want to see if he's able to 
hold the ball while he's now that ball came yeah. out. It's a good call by the officials to correct the mistake on the field and it forces the punt. But uh, you're right, it was a good effort there, but he gets hit again. I, I, I take it back because he dropped the ball, okay? <laughs> okay? So he wasn't that tough. Right. <laughs> Radigan needs a good punt here. Louisville brought pressure. Here's a pretty good kick. Taken at the 35 and Allen straight ahead is Guy. Short return. So once again, this Rutgers defense on the spot. Down by eight because Juwan Spillman reversed momentum in this first quarter for the third time with the kickoff return for the touchdown. Now that poor kicker, you're right. <laughs> poor Ito. Again, if you just joined us, the Empire State Building often is lit up to salute the season or a special occasion. Rutgers Red tonight with the biggest game history of this campus. They must have some connections over there. Get that done. Brown, another first down throw. Tucks it and just gets a couple yards. Meekins chased him out. Brown will not set the world on fire as a runner. Well, he, he, that time he didn't have great protection, and it, the pocket closed in on him. Ramel Meekins uh, put the pressure, Chris, as you said. But one thing about Rutgers is they're third in the nation, almost four sacks per game, and because they're undersized, they will try to bring as much heat as they can to get to Brom before he can throw the ball downfield against the secondary. George Stripling in the game and gets the toss. The first carry for the speedy kind of change of pace back and not much, about a yard. LeBron Thompson will be the interception there on the stop. Well, Brom opened the game going three for three and taking the team right down the field. And then this last time out, he had a line, offensive lineman come back into his face and threw the pick. And his quarterback coach, happens to be his older brother, spent about 10 minutes getting it into his head and letting him know. I mean, he did not stop. We asked Brian about that, and he said, yeah, he's pretty much been that way since I was in Pee Wee. <laughs> Just been the relationship that I've had with him, and he's always pushing, always trying to challenge me to do the right thing and make good decisions. It's Douglas in motion. Brown looks that way over the middle, and then Douglas had to work his way back to the outside, incomplete. Yeah, Brown said Jeff had a, had a very unusual reaction for him. After well, the West Virginia win. Well, we yeah, 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 I know he gave him a hug. We've talked a lot about how do you stop Brian Brown? You get him like any quarterback where he has a little bit, he's starting to feel the heat, starting to feel the pressure. That's the one way to get Brian Brown out of his comfort zone is if you can consistently get people in traffic coming towards his body, and they've done that the last two drives. Louisville's punter is Corey Getchy, took over duties a few games ago. Willie Foster, it's a fake. The up snap and a first down. Breaking into the secondary, Louisville special teams at Nate Harris, the middle linebacker, took the snap and burst forward for 16 yards. Rutgers thought they would have an edge in special teams. Hasn't worked out that way. Well, th they snapped the ball to the up back, which is to me pretty amazing to see that the confidence they have. Preston Smith, a linebacker, hands to another linebacker. They have a guy coming around faking a reverse. Kudos to Bobby Petrino for calling that. I want to say Bobby Stoops because he reminds me of Bob Stoops for being aggressive with the way he's attacking on the road. I love it. First down at the Rutgers 40. Another test for this defense. Colby Smith. Hit hard after a short game. Thompson is having a terrific first quarter there with the stop. Aaron, pretty good first quarter for Brian Brom. Yeah, but remember, guys, what Greg Schiano, Rutgers head coach, told us. He is the difference maker. He said Brom is the best quarterback I've ever faced, I've ever had my team face. And he said the best way to compete against him is keep his rear end, quote, unquote, on the sidelines, guys. Here's the Big East Offensive Player of the Year last year, second in passing efficiency. And he's back in top form after that thumb surgery. And Smith again on second down. Quick burst off the left side. Eric Foster made the stop. 
Talk about quarterback play in this conference. Out of the net, next Syracuse quarterback. Jay Smith, the tight end out of Philadelphia, played at Rutgers and Donovan making this short trip up I-95 to the campus to take in the big game. Smith is right. Boy, was it fun to see Donovan McNabb play quarterback in college. I know he's a great pro quarterback, but I think he was that much more exciting when he was at Syracuse running the option and having such a great offense in his day for the Big Orange. Eagles get that beleaguered Washington defense as they try to stop their slide this weekend. On third and three, a timeout. Take it on the field. A very big third down play. See if Rutgers can get the stop. Louisville trying to build on its lead here. They just convert a fake punt on a run by Nate Harris for a first down. Now it's third and three for Louisville at the Rutgers 33 as we start the second quarter. Crowd trying to impose itself on Braun. Smith next to him in the shotgun. Braun steps back. Well protected. Flips near sideline. And Rudia is battling with the corner Jason McCourty incomplete. <laughs> It was funny to watch those two going back and forth. If you're going to call pass interference on one of them, you're going to have to call it on both of them. They were some serious fighting with the hands, trying to get into position to make the play. But at the end, it's good coverage and not a shock. Louisville will go for it here on fourth and three. It would be about a 50 yarder, and that's within Art Harmony's range. But Petrino, three for six on fourth down this season. Crucial. Smith on the stretch play bites inside the 31st down. Five yards is a wall of blockers on the left side. Makes it first and ten for Louisville. What a great push when on fourth and three by that left side of the offensive line. They brought Barnage over the tight end. They caught a break as far as the personnel. They only had three defensive linemen in. And the big boys up front for the Cardinals offense just pushed the undersized Scarlet Knights defensive front out of the way. Ron fires to the end zone off the hand of Douglas. And beat Brandon Reichardt, the linebacker coming out of the slot, just missed him. He's going to resave us in the studio for a 30 and 30 update. All right, Chris, Joe Paterno will not coach Penn State Saturday against Temple. Paterno still recovering from the injury he suffered when he was on the sideline and was collided, uh, collided with a couple of players as they came out of bounds. They don't want to jeopardize his recovery. We'll have more on that at halftime. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News right now. Yeah, Joe's been a terrible patient, very impatient patient in the hospital. It's Smith on the delay. Adds popping as he gets down inside the 20. Courtney Green on the stop. He's near the first down. Another great job by the left side of the offensive line. Jamal Westerman, the defensive end, gets pushed inside and sealed by Bussey. Watch this open up. I think they're thinking pass. They start to as much movement as they have. That's an example of how the movement can take you away from the play. And that time, big gain there for Smith. Already 130 total yards for this Louisville offense. They give it back to Allen. Rutgers defense again, allowing only 227 yards per game. Louisville at a buck 33, and we're a minute into the second quarter. Yeah, well, this is one of the more high-powered offenses in the country. And now that Brian Brom is, is healthy, even though he's not having a great start so far, a matter of time, so he'll probably find his rhythm. And what they've done is they're relying more now on just running the football. Brown has missed his last five pass attempts. And Smith has blockers out in front. Colby Smith. Another first down. This is more than just a fancy passing offense. They can get no, they can get tough when they need to. They, they can get tough. And what I love is to see a center who's got the athletic ability and toughness to get out in the open field. 77, Eric Wood out of Cincinnati. He comes downfield. Look at this. Look at the seams that they're able to find there. And if you're going to play offensive line for the Louisville Cardinals, you better not only be big, but you better be athletic because they move you around quite a bit. They have big Allen set eight yards deep behind the quarterback, gets the handoff and plows to the five. George Johnson, the true freshman defensive end on the stop. 
Sanders really has to make a stand Kurt, to avoid falling two touchdowns behind. And what's amazing is you, you look at his score and you look at where Louisville is about to go in again. You think, boy, this is kind of what you expect as far as if you think Louisville's offense is scoring. But Rutgers has played pretty well. Rice has been on the sideline, hasn't had a chance to have a big impact. But Rutgers has held up pretty well for the defensive front so far. Second and goal. Brown still's got it. Deflected at the line, incomplete. Eric Foster, the defensive tackle, able to get the big hand up. Foster's the guy that said Brown will see defensive speed and schemes he hadn't seen all season long. He was very confident. This smack before the game. Good hops to create the deflection. Yeah, he was a little trash talking during the coin flip, but he had to make a decision. Do I let come? Do I come off of Allen and give Brom the throw? Or do I sit back on Allen because nobody else is out there? He decides to let go of Allen, put the pressure on Brom, and got a hand up to deflect the ball. Building goal. Across the middle, touchdown. It's Jimmy Riley, the senior from Youngstown, with his first career touchdown. He'd been a career special teamer. Finally, got in a game last week, had a chance to make an impact against West Virginia. Now his first career touchdown. What a well-designed route. Riley comes from the inside, goes out, and then comes back underneath. And it was actually Douglas clearing the way as the outside receiver. The linebacker fell with him, and a huge void right there for Riley to get his first score. This time, no adventure in the PAT. Carmody knocks it through, and Rutgers is in a 15-point hole early in the second quarter. The crowd has taken a seat. The offense leads to spark them. This guy provided sparks on the Rutgers campus way back. Dickie V, ex-Rutgers coach, has a connection to Rex Shiana. We'll visit with Dickie V coming up. But his big thing, what he was talking about, was getting back there, making a decision, and stepping through. Even a great quarterback like Brian Brom still needs to work on the little things, the fundamentals, and a little reminder who's there, his quarterback coach and big brother, always to remind him. A, a little reminder? Is that what it is? That yeah, I think that's what we'll call it. We'll call it that. <laughs> a little reminder. He worked him over. Well, way back in the day, Rutgers was more of a, a basketball school a guy named Dick Vitale was the coach here a, a Jersey guy himself and he joins us on the phone and Dick you have a connection with Greg Schiano's family I know well you know Chris uh, his mom and dad were so special uh, Barry Schiano and Renee Baldecki was his mom she was a cheerleader and I had a crush on her unbelievable <laughs> but she wouldn't give me a shot Chris I wasn't good looking like you at Herb Street <laughs> but she never gave me a chance but I'm going to tell you this if he had half the enthusiasm of his mom and dad, you knew he was going to be a star. When I found out that he was the son of those two people, I said, they got a winner down at Rutgers, and what a winner he is. He's been able to sell players on a vision, Dick. Did you think you'd ever see a football game at Rutgers involving two undefeated teams in November? They have never played a ranked versus ranked game before in football here. Well, you know what it is? He has that mentality that he believes that you can get great players out of New Jersey, New York, and certainly the metropolitan area and even down in Florida with his connection from down in Miami and I remember when I was an assistant there back in the early 70s the mentality of the people was always that they thought they were mediocre and if you think you're mediocre you'll be mediocre and I tried to come in they wanted me to recruit guys that look like you Chris and I said who are we going to be? We're going to be Columbia? I want to be Kentucky and North Carolina. Well, Rutgers just trying to hang on here Dick you have C2 running plays from, from Rice and then Leonard and now it's going to be third and long. You know, just, just, you know what? You know, I love what he's done, and I know Dick Lloyd, who gave me my great chance, his brother Bobby played with Jimmy Valvano, and Jimmy, I know, would be smiling like crazy seeing records where they are today. But we came in, we recruited kids like Phil Sellers and Mike Dabney, and they went to the final four in 1976. Now, I'm young, added to that group, and got James Bailey and Copeland and those guys, and that's what Chiano's doing. Greg is a great, great choice for that job. That was the year 76 the football team went undefeated as well on third and long teal incomplete it was dropped by Britt over the middle 
And the big hits that Louisville's been unleashed on these receivers may be in their head. That's another drop. Yeah, that's another drop over the middle of the field. We saw one earlier when Underwood came across, and he knew that Brandon Sharp was going to close in on him. And this time it's the freshman, true freshman, Kenny Bread, who Greg Schiano tells us he's getting better and better and more of an understanding like most freshmen. It takes some games and some experience, but that time he was open. He just has to secure the football. Boy, hearing Dick, Dick, hearing your voice, I'm ready for some college hoops. Well, I can't wait. We start on Monday, but I can tell you this, you know, that isn't it sad, though? And I know you guys don't want to buy this. I try to argue with my man, Mr. Fowler, all the time. Isn't it sad that one of these clubs could finish unblemished, and the winner of the Ohio State-Michigan game goes unblemished, and they may not get a chance to play for a national title? How sad is that? That's why in college basketball, we're light years ahead of what they do in football. Hey, I got one. I knew you were going there eventually. If we if we kept you on the phone long enough, you'd go. I agree with you. This system means. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you. Well, let me ask this. you this. What's worse, Dick? Having our system or the BCS where every week and every game matters, and then I know the system's flawed at the end of the year, or having March Madness where the three weeks of March are the greatest thing that there is, but what happens in December and January and February are meaningless. Well, it I doesn't matter. You, totally, Kurt. you can't tell me it's meaningless because they're compiling a resume to be one of the 65 teams. Anytime you have a team like Auburn two years ago who runs the table in the SEC and they don't play for a national title. You can't tell me that the system's not flawed. The system is more than flawed. Hey, Dick, we can't sort it out in this phone call. Look forward to the start of college hoop season, and thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks a lot. And Mr. Shiano and Petrino sounds like the Linguini Bowl. <laughs> a little Italian last night in the place. He yeah, saw Quintero Frierson get his hand on the ball as Brom misfired there on first down. The rare misfire when they've thrown on first down. He's been very sharp and very successful against Shiano's defense. Three on the play clock. They just snap it in time. Brom fades back. It's a screen dumped off to Smith. He cuts it back and falls forward for a nice game. Thompson there on the stop. It'll set up third and two. Let's go to Aaron Andrews for a report. Well, guys, I was standing behind the defensive line bench there for Rutgers, and they were hearing it pretty good from their coach. He was saying it's not about X's and O's. It's about the individual battles. You got to come off the line of scrimmage and blitz, and you got to get to the ball carrier. Who cares about the plays at this point? It's all about you. It's all about the will, and Louisville's will is what's showing up on the scoreboard right now. Well, they've been able to convert these third down and shorts pretty easily. Allen fights forward. It'll be very close to the marker at the 40. It was 225 pounds, a freshman running back meeting the offensive line. The crowd booing this spot. The Mel Meekins on the stop. And the chains ought to come out here. The yellow line says he's got it. I'm not so sure that if you eyeball where the chain is on the far side, it's that clear cut. And it's a very it's going to be a very close call. And you can see between Taylor leading the way and Allen. Taylor. 245 pounds as a leading fullback and Allen coming in at about 230. First down. Yep. Depending on the angles that we have, if Greg Schiano really wanted to push the issue there, he could check to see of what kind of spot it was. See that Louisville dominating in yards on the ground. Rutgers really. Has never get, you know, been in this regular offensive game plan tonight, throwing early and often. And now they're way behind. Brown has time. Fires deep. It's Douglas who shoves the man aside, makes the catch inside the 20-yard line. He beat Manny Collins. And now the crowd's going to get even more agitated. A little, little contact there is the... Junior receiver created some space and hauled it in for 39 yards. Well, they, Rutgers decided to blitz. When you blitz, you're leaving your corners on an island out there. Manny Collins gets a little push. There's no question there was a push by Douglas, but why leave it into the hands? Why leave it in the hands of an official? Look at the blitz coming from the far right. It's picked up that time. Nice job by the offensive line. The backs doing their job. And you're right, Douglas gets away with a little bit of a push, but it's nonetheless a big game for this Cardinal offense again. Three catches already for Harry Douglas. This is Smith on the delay. 
flying up into the hole to make the stop is Ron Geralt, the safety. But again, he makes the stop about six yards downfield. With the running and throwing of what Louisville can do, they have doubled over double amount of plays at this point of what Rutgers had a chance. They're keeping the ball away from Ray Rice. Look at time of possession. Clearly a huge advantage for the Cardinals. Now they're going to go with a quick snap here, trying to catch him off guard. It's 31 plays with a kickoff return for a touchdown factored into that, remember. And flags will fly the left side of the Louisville offensive line misfiring. Already that Rutgers defense been out there a long time. Prior to the snap, false start, number 76 on the offense, five yard penalty, remains second down. You want a nitpick, that's the fourth little kind of execution five yard penalty they've had in this first half. There you go. But that's nitpick. <laughs> Maybe some voters will look at that and say, oh, oh they they're don't, not they that don't, good. They don't execute well. See, they have to keep having the penalties. Yeah, well, watch Florida's offense. <laughs> They have been struggling ex with their execution. Well, talk about whether well, there's a double standard at work and how Louisville is evaluated for some other teams later on tonight. Back to second and nine. Barnard's the tight end in motion. Goes to the flats. Ball knocked loose. Brom dives to the floor and gets it back. So the ball knocked out of Brian Brown's hands by Javon Thompson at the interception earlier, but he falls on it. They keep blitzing. ESPN and ABC team up to bring you the top two teams in the nation. A week before the big showdown in Columbus, 3.30 Easter, Troy Smith and the Bucks travel to Evanston. And then on ESPN, Chad Henney and the Wolverines visit Indiana. So ABC and ESPN featuring the Bucks and the Wolves there a week away from that big collision. Smith on the delay, 30-14. They run it, and he gets nowhere near a first down. <laughs> Courtney Green on the stop, and we'll see a field goal attempt. Bobby Petrino, they, they were able to get into a third and long early in the game, and they hit Yerudia for a first down. This time, he just trying to pick up as many yards as he can, give his kicker a chance to make this uh, field goal. And Art Comedy taking over the Louisville record for scoring in a career. He can knock this through, and he does it. The lefty, very solid, and the special teams for Louisville have been superb tonight. What a change. Chiano's team falls in a bigger hole now, 25-7 midway in the second quarter. Chiano, not the first coach to take a leap of faith when he came here to Rutgers. We'll visit with women's basketball coach Vivian Stringer, who did just that. Coming up. If they have to be able to put something together to be able to get back in this game, Remember, they took the ball to start the game, so Louisville will have the choice. Obviously, they'll take the ball to start the second half. With that in mind, Mike Teal and the Scarlet Knights will have to uh, try to put something together in these final six minutes. We'll see if they can make a play on special teams. It's been Louisville dominant in that situation early. On the return, James Townsend has some rain. Really That's a positive play. It'll get good field position for this Rutgers offense across the 40. 36 yards for Townsend. Well, that's the field position that they needed, and we'll see if Mike Teal can take advantage of it. This is just now, once again, Kirk, becoming a, a good football school. It's been a strong women's basketball school for a while, and, and Vivian Stringer now joins us, the coach of the Scarlet Knights. She's taken three different teams to the Final Four. You kind of took a leap of faith coming here a little bit from Iowa and, and making an investment in this place. What, what Shiano has done as well, when, when he took this job, it wasn't a great football job. You, you see something of a parallel as a program builder? Oh, I'll tell you what, when you've got a great university as we have, and you have the kind of administrative support, and you're in the area of the country that we are in, you have to know that uh, great things can happen. And I think that uh, Greg just methodically built the program in the right way with good people and great support. You've seen a lot of coaches. Do you see kind of the spark in him? He's able to make players believe when it seems illogical what he's trying to sell them sometimes. Yeah, because he's, he's able to help them to see the dream that he has, and there's no reason. Rutgers is a sleeping giant. New Jersey is a sleeping giant. So his attitude is, let's you know, if you want to be the best, let's bring the best here, and we're in the best part of the country. Coach, what do you think it is that maybe people that aren't familiar with this area don't realize that Rutgers can take advantage of? Is, is it resources? Is it, is it athletic ability? 
Um, first of all, I think that some of the greatest players in the, in the in the country have come from the state of New Jersey. It's supplied some of the top 20 programs always in in men and women's basketball and certainly in football. And there goes our Scarlet Knights. Yeah, you're, there I, you go. That's not. You're, you're, you're allowed to cheer in the press box. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to be objective, <laughs> but, but you're allowed to cheer. That's Cordell Young. He's the young back. He's the back of the future. Ray Rice's understudy gets in there, takes the pass from Teal. 39 yards later, that's the spark the offensive uh, team for Rutgers needs. I like the fact that they moved Young, who, as Chris, you said, has great speed. He's a tailback. They moved him out to the slot. Just not a whole lot of uh, sophistication to what they tried to do. They're just able to catch Louisville off guard and coming underneath with a, kind of that, that uh, tunnel screen that you see so many of the spread offenses run. And at time, boy, what a big play. And the timing could not have been any better for the Scarlet Knights offense. You said this is not an offense built for the quick comeback, but they need points in a hurry. Now it's Rice. He's around the corner. Ray Rice headed to the end zone. Yes. Touchdown. <laughs> Coach Stringer saying yes and applauding up here. You got good timing. Oh, I, mean, I tell you, how, how much better can it be? Good Scott, luck. We're going to be fine. Our Scottie Knights are going to be fine. Good, good luck charm around here. Oh, I tell you, I'm a great football fan, and in particular of the Scarlet Knights. We're going to take care of things. Well, 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 thanks for joining us tonight. Best of luck for your basketball season as you guys get set to get underway. Thank you so much, and go Scarlet Knights. Appreciate it. You, you may not want to leave three or four <laughs> plays, and she puts the ball in the end zone. Yeah, we're going to have to stay here a little bit longer. <laughs> Ray Rice's 14th rushing touchdown on the season. Jeremy Ito, and that was a quick strike drive, Kirk. 59 yards like in three said, plays. Their offense is not <laughs> equipped and built to score in a hurry. Captain Margaret. Snap, fall start, number 90 <laughs> on the offense, five yard penalty. Coach Finger wants to hang around. Yard she, yard she likes it. She should. Either <laughs> you know, that or go down on the sideline. Just four plays. She's up here with this. <laughs> He'll try the PSC again. Big kickoff return. And found the backup. Cordell Young on a, on a screen. It was a nice little wrinkle, wasn't it? Oh, the backup sure tailback who and really it, hadn't touched the ball yet tonight. It's also nice to see Ray Rice, who, if there's one player that America is familiar with on the Rutgers team, it is Ray Rice. And that was the first time we've had a chance to see him unveiled. And you can see that burst that he has, that low center of gravity, how tough it is to bring him down. He's a very sturdy back. Ito, no problem on the conversion from five yards further back. Shiano's team back within 11 as Rice finds the end zone. Many believe could join the conversation as a Heisman finalist, just take the train to the ceremony in New York City perhaps, even as a sophomore, but it's been a quiet night for him so far. It has been, but maybe this will be the, the run that's able to spring him into the second half. Chris, 28 carries a game. Yeah. I mean, you think about being 5'9 and about 195 pounds, that's chopping a lot of wood for that young back. <laughs> the deep kickoff taken by Spillman. Could he do it again? He was tripped up as he crossed the 20. Just keep but he ripping. had a crease. Keep ripping on this Louisville special teams. They seem to like We that. woke him up. See last yeah. week. He motivated there you go. There you them. Go. Wake Forest is awake this year. A big game in Tallahassee. Leading the Atlantic Division, sharing it anyway as they visit the Knowles. Others will see Texas try to keep the BCS title game hopes alive as they take on Kansas State on the road. That was a team, of course, that Louisville beat without Brian Brom at quarterback. So people will look and see how did Texas handle Kansas State compared to how Louisville went, winning by 18. Cardinals right back to work. Initial penetration blows the play up, and then Stripling is chased down. Fires in a good first half. He sure has, and I'll tell you, this, this series, we just talked about how important it was for Rutgers to get on the board before half. We didn't realize they would score so quickly. Greg Schiano's offense doing a good job, and now he's got to rely on his defense to come up with a stop. It doesn't have to be three and out, but come up with a stop and do not allow Brian Brown to move the ball down the field and get points. Louisville gets the ball to start the second half. Brown in the flats. It's caught by Smith. The two Scarlet Knights converge and make the stop. Brandon Reichert with the hit. 
The junior from right here in Piscataway. Uh, anytime you play Louisville, the importance of making a tackle in the open field is paramount. That time, Ranker, it was there alongside with McCourty, the corner. So it was a two-on-one. Ranker did not hesitate at all. He just lowered the boom. He's been a very active uh, player for this Rutgers defense in the second half. He's a hybrid, kind of a safety linebacker type guy. Rutgers may have some time to do more damage if they can get the stop here on third and 13. Brown pressure throws it away. They brought the blitz. Devin McCourty, the safety, got there in a hurry. And now they're up again, waving their towels. Rutgers will get the football back, could have decent field position. Well, that's what Greg Schiano, that's the trademark defense. The energy, the speed, the athletic ability. We talked to him yesterday and we said, what are the strengths of your defense? He talked about speed and the understanding of the concepts and confidence. That's exactly what you saw in those three plays. Willie Foster, the senior from Miami, is deep for the Scarlet Knights. Low snap, the ball partially blocked at the line of scrimmage. They throw a flag, but did they get the football? That would wave off the penalty. It was Lee Glenn who got in there. Shiano complaining the pass, the punt was deflected. It was Glenn charged with the personal foul. And a look. It's just a matter of whether or not they got a hand on the ball because they came in there and without question. Lee roughed him. I don't think there was a hand on the football. Tough to tell from that angle. And it was Boy, what, a, Lee. what a tough break with all this momentum. And all this confidence, Lee's hand came close, but I don't think he made contact with the ball. And then he ran right into the punter. The punter only went 15 yards. Is yeah, it possible well, that he, he could have gone that low with it without it being deflected? I think he was just hurrying to try to get the ball out of there before the pressure got to him, and he did a good job of getting it out. But Rutgers, exactly what they did not want to happen to give Brian Brown the ball back. And now... Rutgers will call a timeout. Rutgers, that is your first timeout of the half. Here's what's at stake for Louisville. They vaulted up to number three in the BCS standings after beating West Virginia last week. Margin fairly comfortable for now over Florida but I think most would agree the human polls make up two thirds of it that style points count a lot. Yeah and what I thought was interesting this week is seeing the separation now between Florida and Texas. I mean, you're talking about two thousands of a point. Yeah you're talking about it. it get, it's going to come down week to week between those two teams if Louisville ends up falling out of the picture. Well, if they keep winning, I mean, Texas yeah. has a oh, much yeah. easier path than Florida, right? Of course, of course. I think the Florida-Florida State game is setting itself up for a, a classic showdown. Here's the thing, too. If you want to look at uh, how one team affects another, it actually benefits Louisville and their chances of getting to the BCS championship game if Texas keeps winning. Because Texas can be a buffer in the human polls. Right now, they're right behind Louisville. If they yeah. don't lose, they won't drop. Right. But their computer isn't very good. They're not going to be playing highly ranked teams down the line in the Big 12, including the conference championship game. So they don't have a chance to really boost themselves in the computers. It helps Louisville if Texas keeps winning and doesn't drop the polls. You've been talking to Brad Edwards. You sound pretty dialed in there. Well, Brad Edwards I is a good source for that stuff. He is. He's yes. the best. I watched him, uh, I think it was on Tuesday. He was breaking all the information down regarding the BCS and the computers and the what's to ex what to expect in, re in future weeks. ESPN.com has all that stuff. Brad's yes. all over. Yes, it does. Brad does a good job. On first down after the defensive timeout, a quick burst over the left side by Smith near midfield. Eric Foster on the stop. And we'll see if Louisville can add on more points before halftime. We'll check in with Reese Davis. All right, Chris, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. We'll break down who the best of the one loss teams are. Also tell you why neither Michigan nor Ohio State should worry about a letdown and give you an update on Joe Paterno's condition. All coming up at the half. Please thank you. First down for the Cardinals now. 
240 and running in the first half. Ron fires complete to Arudia, who's hit quickly. Five yard gain, McCourty in the stop. Well, when you blitz as much as Rutgers defense is blitzing, especially in a two minute offense, when, when Ryan Brom has a chance, if they protect, you're leaving your corners and, and safeties on an island one on one. And that is, is a tough thing to do. Eventually, Brian Brom, you can see who, he, who has helped him along the way. His, of course, his father played at Louisville, his brother. Jeff was a quarterback at Louisville, now he's quarterback coach. A matter of time, though, he hurts you one on one. Well, Brom, he swarmed there. Jamal Westerman got him. But true to his colors, Greg Schiano says, yeah, you know, you're right. Maybe we're taking a little bit of a risk, but this is what we do. We believe in putting pressure on a quarterback, and that's just confidence from a head coach and slash defensive coordinator that he thinks he can get to Brian Brom before Brom can make that defensive backfield pay for the one-on-one -on -one coverage. On third down, incomplete. So Rutgers has had pretty good success on third down tonight, stopping Louisville. And only two for nine. Of course, they had the two fourth down conversions in that one drive, including the fake punt. I'm telling you, that is a huge, huge series for Rutgers after the three and out, the momentum back, the crowd into the game. Then they roughed the punter, giving Brian Brom and the Cardinals offense the, off, the ball back. They pick up a first down. You're thinking, here they go. And then to be able to come up with a stop, assuming they don't pull off a fake punt. <laughs> It's Foster and we'll just let this one bounce. And a nice job. Getchy knocks it dead at the four all the way around. Just a superb night for Louisville special teams. 45 yard punt knocked dead at the five. Just like the scouting report says. They've been bad until last week. <laughs> right. The numbers don't lie. They hadn't had a kick return, they hadn't had a punt return. Meanwhile, they were very good in that punting, and the, yeah, the, and they what did you what you call it? A little, uh, a little scolding, a little whatever. You had a nicer word for it, but Big Brother got after Little Brother there. So a little, little consultation, advice. little advice, a little consultation. Advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would at least still he's still down there going after him. I I just wonder if Jeff Jeff, it's so easy when it's your own blood, it's your own younger brother who you've been doing that with. If he if he gets after Hunter Cantwell and the other quarterbacks as much as he gets after Brian. So Shiano can hand it off straight ahead here to Rice. That, that roughing the kicker really cost Rutgers a chance to do something here. You know, they, they time was lost, and of course field position was gained. Their under armor advantage in the first half. Juwan Spillman had that 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. When Rutgers had momentum, this this guy's return took it right back for the visitors. It was a huge play, and it's interesting to see Louisville now calling a timeout. They're trying to see if they can force Rutgers into a punt. All right, we'll come back. Last minute of the first half. Rutgers to snap it on second and five. Rice stumbles forward to the 10. We'll see if Louisville burns another timeout. Oh, yeah, there, there's no doubt about that. Shiano counseling Teal. Chopping wood, just keep after it. That's their shorthand expression for maintaining focus and going back to work. It all started after the Illinois game last year on the road where they they came close. They were competitive, still trying to build this program, get the kids to believe it can work. And he said, guys, we're in a forest. There's just a bunch of trees around us. Let's just keep our head down and just keep chopping. Keep chopping wood. And their team last year getting to a bowl game after a seven and four year. I think really impacted and validated what Greg Schiano was trying to do at Rutgers. And I think it got the entire team to buy in in the offseason. I think it's, it created a lot of confidence when they came into this year. Well, they're going to have to chop some wood in the second half here. Yeah, there's, a, there's some redwoods chop, here. The lead is, yeah. There's some redwoods here in the second half. Uh, they've had some breakthrough games here. This is the game against Pittsburgh in October. It was a three-game road trip for the Scarlet Knights. 
This is a game that you know many thought they'd be exposed on defense by Palco. He was number one in passing efficiency coming into the game. They hit him. They knocked him around. And they did not allow any big plays really. You know, and I, Ray Rice, I think, in the in the Scarlet Knights got on the map nationally after this game, going on the road and showing that they could play with a team that at that point was playing with a lot of confidence. 39 carries for Rice in that game for 225. Get 116 in the fourth quarter alone. Yeah, that's what. That's probably the belief that they have now from that game. They're going to talk about that at halftime. Well, Rice is able to muscle forward for a first down, so at least they avoid having to punt the ball back to Louisville here. And because of the game plan from Rutgers, because they've tried to put the game into the hands of Mike Teal early in the game, they've gone away from their strength, which is Ray Rice, and tried to break some tendencies throwing the football. And we really have not seen as much of Rice as we we thought coming into the game that we might see. That's only his eighth carry. Talking about a young man who's used to carrying it 28 times a game. He's got the 42 yards and the one touchdown. Clock running down now. Neither team interested in stopping it. We're gonna have to stop it. Well, they just want to avoid the delay of game penalty, yeah. but. They can stop it one more time. And again, you mentioned Louisville is going to get the ball to start the second half and another pressure possession for that Rutgers defense to try to end. Well, I, as far as a grade that I would give Greg Schiano's defense, uh, I would probably give him an A minus or B plus. When you hold Brian Brom to 8 of 17 for 133 yards with an interception and a touchdown, that's I'll tell you, that's a pretty that's a pretty good effort in the first half against Brom in this offense. You know, Schiano had an interesting chore earlier this week. He was a pizza delivery guy. On Tuesday, check this scene out: 10,500 Rutgers tickets distributed in about four hours. And many had camped that on Monday oh night. Shiano wades in there and brings like 50 pizzas, which were swallowed up instantly. They don't have this kind of thing on this campus. That, that, that's a first. Just to get in here, you're allowed a free ticket as part of your student fee. For your 20 grand tuition, you, you ought to get a free ticket, frankly. It's pretty expensive to go to school here. But, you know, 10,500 cool tickets though. in four hours. That was great to great see. Great to see. We were here, we got in here nice and early three hours before and the students were already in here with a general admission seating filed all the way to the top of the student section. If you could factor out special teams it'd be a pretty even first half but you can't Louisville's special teams were superb. Ray Rice had the one touchdown but Spillman the kickoff return for a touchdown a huge part of this first half Cardinals had the lead let's go to Aaron take the lead to the locker room but Rutgers defense really turning it up the last couple series what are they doing against your offense yeah we got to protect the quarterback better they started blitzing and hitting Brian a little bit and we got to be more accurate throwing the ball get better protection and bust some on the runs we're real close to breaking a couple long runs all right thank you so much Bet. On special teams, not just the Spillman retreat from this Scarlet Knights defense. Six hurries, two sacks, an interception for his older brother and quarterback coach went ballistic. <laughs> uh, but at, uh, in Rutgers, this first possession for their defense is Brian Brown will get the ball. Will be very important to see what kind of second half we're going to see. That's not too bad. You saw the pressure stats for Shiano. I mean, Brown's a 63% passer. He's 8 for 17 in the first half, but had the two big passes. Aaron visited with Shiano coming out of the locker room. Yeah, guys, in a very calm Coach Shiano coming out of the locker room. He told me for their defense, pretty happy with what they're doing so far, particularly in the last couple of series. Wants to make it uncomfortable, though, for Brian Brom. Keep him on the sidelines. He said, we got to get Ray Rice involved more on the offense and look for them to throw to Brian Leonard here coming up in the second half, guys. Leonard has been quiet as a pass receiver. He comes into the game leading Rutgers in that category, but they've kept a close eye on the senior and Rice will be active as long as the Rutgers can stay within striking distance and that means getting a stop here on defense to begin the third quarter. Remember the last time this defense of uh, Rutgers was out on the field towards the end of the first half they came up with a big three and out when the ball was deep in Louisville territory then they ended up roughing the punter to give Brian Brom another chance but still didn't give up any points. You know Ito has been very good at reaching the end zone on touchbacks all year not tonight and once again they'll have a kickoff return except this time good coverage by the Scarlet Knights. Zaire Kitchen there on the stop, but Rutgers special teams solid throughout. Not tonight. Big hit here, though. Well, Kitchen got into the kitchen here. Of <laughs> guy, I mean that was a big hit. Comes in high. Mm. 
It's a clothesline, but he did not get his hands up around the face mask. The guy goes a buck 60, so it didn't take that much time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Crowd on his feet, waving the towels again. Smith having a hard time hearing the play from Brown. But once he gets the football, knows what to do, breaks a tackle, a nice game for 15, a flag down on the far sidelines. Record on the stop. And that holding area, bring it back, but not be surprised at all here to see Bobby Petrino go back to the basics, trying to run right into the teeth of that defense holding. of Rutgers with all that Number movement. on the offense, 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul, repeat first down. You got George Bussey, the tackle, has had a couple penalties tonight. They've had great success with that power run again. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the ways you try to attack a team that moves so much is just roll up your sleeves as the Sunshine Skiller oh, likes to see it, over here? and just yeah. seriously run right into that movement with your offensive line and a big power back. Well, the holding penalty was downfield, so it only creates a first and 11. Ron runs out of time and runs forward for a short gain. We saw in the first half how many times Louisville went underneath. One of the adjustments that looks like Rutgers will make is as the receiver comes underneath, this time he has to negate because there's pressure underneath. That play right there to Riley worked to Harry Douglas and Riley quite a bit. Great adjustment there by Greg Schiano taking that away. And Smith cuts back inside again, running through some arm tackles. Falls forward for a couple. George Johnson on the stop. Smith has proven to be a real physical runner out of Tallahassee. Enjoying the fact that he feels like he's made the right choice here, choosing Louisville as the hometown Seminole struggle. Third and four. Four receiver set. Brom over the middle, incomplete. I thought we might see a flag for interference. On Geralt, the safety was all over the receiver. I think he's got his feet tangled up with the receiver. Again, it's the underneath route. Comes in there a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, it comes in early. Brian Brom say, whoa, wait a second. That was big time pass interference. The Rutgers gets away with it. Not only the feet getting tangled up, he came in and made contact with his body, but Louisville loves the underneath routes against the man coverage from Rutgers. But a big stop to force the punt. And she gets it away. Foster has some room. Oh, just tripped up there. A flag is down on the return. Foster had some daylight. Latarius Thomas just able to get him by the ankle, but Spenley looks to be on the Scarlet Knights. Would have had great field position. Well, Once again, it, a special team's it's mistake. Hidden, hidden yardage. This is one of those plays where you're Greg Schiano, you just go Third back. The return. Illegal block in the back. Number 25 on the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that was frustrating. That'll cost them about 17 yards in penalties. These are the two unbeaten teams left in the Big East. Again, you know, you play the seven conference games, so these teams not even halfway through. That's what they have to kind of keep reminding people. Other, other conferences winding down with their schedule. These guys just getting cranked up. It goes right through December 2nd. Still a lot of big games to be played, regardless of the outcome of this game tonight. See how Rutgers decides to attack here in the second half where they threw so much with Teal, especially on first and ten. Two tight ends to the left of the formation. And it's Rice running to that side. Just pure power of football, but not much. Just tried to outman him over there. Well, it's tough to outman yeah, nine guys up in the box. But we, we talked how Rutgers did a good job of stopping Brian Brom, even though they gave up 25 points. A lot of that had to do with Spillman on the big kickoff return. But holding Brom to 133 yards is pretty good. But look at the time of possession. 
Scarlet Knights cannot get their hands on the football, which is an important thing to do when you rely so much on running the ball. One of those fourth down conversions, a fake punt converted by Nate Harris, the linebacker on the short snap. Teal on second and long, has to dodge pressure, now dumps it off short, caught by Rice for a minimal gain there. Moby Okoye was there in a hurry, got a hand on Teal, had to fight away from him, four-yard gain. What a surprise. It's Okoye for the Cardinals getting penetration and allowing Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, what a luxury of having a dominant defensive lineman. The reason is you don't always have to blitz to get pressure on a quarterback. Did he have to fight off the hold there a little bit? Yeah, he fought through, he fought through a couple arm tackles. Third and five for the Knights. Teal. Incomplete, almost intercepted on the slant. He was looking for Dennis Campbell. Gavin Smart there on the coverage. Intended for Campbell is incomplete. So Rutgers three and out on their first possession. Crucial one in the third quarter. A tough. It's it's what's happening is with the lack of experience from the receiving core for Rutgers. They have a young group, a group that has a great future. But right now, they just, so far in this game, when they've come across the middle, they've shown their inexperience and being a little intimidated by this Louisville defense. And this is Sean Tucker, their senior captain, the receiver, who remains out with a broken ankle on the punt. Up the middle. Once again, it's Jawan Spillman who's been dangerous tonight and out near the 45-yard line. So good field position for the Cardinals as they try to build on this 11-point lead. The commissioner of the Big East who deserves to pop out his chest a little bit these days. Mike Trangizi will join us when we come back to Rutgers. Area has hosted a meaningful big college football game late in the season. We talked about Army and Notre Dame 60 years ago. Empire State Building lit up with Rutgers Red tonight, but the home team down by 11 to Louisville. Early third quarter. Needed team successful in its first possession of the second half, and Brown pressured and sacked. Eric Foster got him. Rutgers, one of the best sack teams in the country, coming in or down, for the third time. Down 11, they're going to continue to gamble and continue to take chances. It's really paid dividends in the first half as they've come out here in this second series in the second half. They know that they've got to get the ball back to Mike Teal. 30 sacks coming in, one of the best in the country at pressuring quarterbacks. Not only three sacks, but numerous hurries. They have made Brian Brom uncomfortable tonight in the pocket. You know, Eric Foster had something to say in the locker room. He's one of the fiery, emotional guys in the Rutgers defense, and he backs it up with a big play there. Second and 16. It's Smith picking his way close to the sideline. Gets back near the initial line of scrimmage. These are proud times for the Big East Conference. Two weeks and two collisions of unbeatens. And the commissioner, Mike Trangizi, nice enough to join us here in the booth. Talked about what a big night it is for the New York area with a college football game of, of this magnitude. Big night for your conference, too. Not bad for a league that was proclaimed dead a few years ago. Huh? You, you, can, you can gloat a little bit. It's okay. I think dead is being kind. I think they had us in the coffin. It, it's just great to see uh, people work hard and to uh, rebuild. And our people are enjoying themselves. On third and 11. Brom fires over the middle intended for Arudia overthrown and Rutgers defense does its job once again Mike you've resisted so far campaigning for Louisville number three in the BCS have you seen what you were looking for in those standings and the voters giving this team respect there's still plenty of skeptics out there well it seems a lot of coaches are all of a sudden uh, they want to get involved in the selection process I, I I've talked to all three of our coaches before we played the West Virginia Louisville game in our ADs and I just told them we're not going to get involved in it. Uh, there's a system or part of it and the system will decide. You will not no matter what happens. No. If we, if we have a 12 and 0 team that doesn't get in we're not going to gripe because my answer to uh, my answer to the whole situation is if the system's wrong then let's change it. You know I mean all six of the conferences were responsible for the system and the coaches that are complaining about it now it was their commissioners and their Indeed. conferences that were part of the decision making process if they want to have a playoff they want to have a plus one then let's go do it but to sit here and, and you know it doesn't bother me but, but to see coaches being critical of other coaches programs I, I just don't, don't think it, it helps any of us in college football we're seeing the depth of this conference this year Mike but through that transition of losing Boston College, Virginia Tech, and Miami sitting in your chair. What was the toughest part 
of going through that process. I think waking up the next morning and <laughs> facing reality and, and I, I you know we had five programs who really didn't know whether they were going to be able to continue to compete at football's highest level. Um, two of those programs Pitt and Syracuse had won national championships. West Virginia had mm -hmm. played for a national mm -hmm. championship. Rutgers had played in the first football game ever played and Connecticut had just uh, spent millions of dollars upgrading and they were sitting there not knowing whether or not they would be able to compete. That, that was the hardest thing. What was your message during that process to get people to believe in the future? told them we had no choice. We had to work hard and push and, and everybody was going to have to contribute in terms of facilities and commitments and making certain we hired good coaches. You know, it just happened so fast though, Kirk. I mean, I, I don't know that any of us thought that three years later we'd be playing back-to-back -back undefeated <laughs> games on ESPN in prime time. It's Brian Leonard collecting the pass from Teal after the first down carry by Leonard. Short gain on the reception and set up a third down he carries a lot of weight for Rutgers in their efforts to get back in here already midway in the third quarter. Mike, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. We appreciate that. And and uh, who knows if Louisville is undefeated and excluded, I, I'll, we'll be screaming for you. You won't have to. At least, at least yeah, well, well, I think I think a lot of people feel that uh, depending on what happens with the outcome of this game, that Louisville has done enough and proven enough that. You know, they're in uncharted waters for their yeah. school. I think a lot of people from some of the powerhouse conferences, the alleged powerhouse conferences, are having a tough time embracing what they're doing. And I think if you're objective, it's hard to argue with what they've done up to this point if they get through this game. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you. On third down, dropped again. And look for Clark Harris, the tight end, in his hands. And how many times have we seen potential first downs spoiled by drops on third down? Well, that's the fourth time, unofficially. I've been keeping track of receivers that have had a chance to make a big catch and move the chains and only to come away with a, another attempted punt by the Rutgers offense. Teal has played better than his numbers right now, 4 of 13. Just a lot of drops right now by the tight end and the receivers. And Harris is a good receiving tight end. He's a guy they count on. Couldn't collect that pass, and now they have to run it away. And this time, a, a nice job corralling Spillman. No running room for the dangerous Louisville for Turner. But Rutgers defense has to go back out there and make another stop. Time slipping away in this third quarter. A lot of media. Paul Robeson, the greatest Rutgers football player ever. A talented singer. Actor, political activist in the teens here. Brown will throw it on first down in the flats, incomplete. It was off the hands of Stripling, pretty well defended over there. I can't say enough about how pressed I am with this Rutgers defense. I keep thinking that they're taking too many chances, and it's a matter of time until it backfires. But Greg Schiano has a philosophy, it works. And even though you're playing an explosive offense that can ignite at any moment, he continues to get pressure on Brian Brown. Louisville's now got one more yard than Rutgers has been giving up per game so far. We figured that would happen, but they've been doing a good job lately. Brown on second down over the middle complete. It's a Rudy of fighting towards the marker. Pops the ball, then it comes free. No fumble. It'll be Louisville football, and where they're spotting it, Sika Rudy is a little bit short of the first down at about the 43 yard line. That's just it. When you bring pressure, you're leaving your secondary one on one, and it really comes down to can you get to the pressure? It's a little rub route. He decided actually to go to Urudia. And that ball, that ball is, is well short. The spot's fine. But he his man to cut to the outside broke free. They hurry up on third and short. Rutgers gets him. Rankart, the ex-walk-on. High school quarterback, wide receiver, safety linebacker. He's in it all here. <laughs> and a huge stop. I'm really... Move over punt. Again, Chris, really impressed. At that time, they almost got caught off guard. Brian Brown trying to get to the line quickly. Ranker just slid right through, right through a gap and is able to get the penetration to come up with an explosion in the backfield. You force three consecutive three and outs against this Louisville offense. Number two in scoring in the country. You've done a great job, but the Rutgers offense now has to step up and wouldn't hurt if the special teams would, first of all, avoid a mistake. 
Making the fair catch is Willie Foster. Rutgers will have it at the 18. Rankard has done everything tonight. He blitzes. He gets a lot of penetration. Look how there's a lot of confusion. Guys are trying to get lined up right. There's two tight ends, so it's a balanced look from the offense, creating a little confusion. But it also, because they were confused, I think it confused Louisville's offensive line. But 47 Rankard sliding right through there and able to just blow up the play. See Brom not having one of his sharper nights in terms of completion percentage. Rare when he's under 50%, but he's had two big pass plays. Teal fakes the pitch, has it across the middle, almost intercepted. He was looking for Kenny Brett, but Latarius Thomas read the play and had a diving chance at a pick. Well, he saw the play developing, took a chance. That's a true freshman. And Thomas, the safety, who's got a tremendous future and upside for the Louisville defense, taking on Britt coming in. He read the eyes of the quarterback, Teal, and almost came in there to make the interception. You know, last week we got done doing Louisville, West Virginia. You know what the knock, of course, on Louisville was? Eh, their offense is caliber of a top three BCS team, but not their defense. How about the defense tonight so far? It's been very strong. We go back to Rice on second and ten, and he just muscles straight ahead. Back to Latarius Thomas for a second. He's the first true freshman to start here at Louisville under Petrino. One of the guys to, comes from Florida. Both these schools recruit a lot in Florida. Basically getting guys that the Gators, the Knowles, and the Hurricanes are maybe not looking at in most cases. And that's good. You yeah. get a lot of good guys <laughs> down there. A, there's a lot of depth. It's a deep pool down there. And it's you see a Latarius Thomas, who's able to help this defense out, 6'2", about 210 pounds as a true freshman. He's a big-time player. And you see what they've got in an important third and six. Teal has time across the middle. It's high and it's complete. Ready for daylight is Britt. The freshman in a foot race. Loses the football. It's loose. Did he get it back? Rutgers ball inside the five. Not just an enormous conversion, but a huge play and a crucial fumble recovery as William Gay knocked it away. Britt got it back 74 yards. I think it's interesting here to see that the, the young man who comes in for the true freshman is Russell. John Russell, number 13. His poor angle and the way he was breaking on the ball, and Britt is very lucky to get the ball back. His poor angle allowed the freshman to cut in front and eventually run all the way down the field. And how about the hustle there by William Gay and almost gets the ball back. Back to Louisville. First and goal. Rice, left side. Touchdown. I told you the motto chopping wood. That's what Rutgers does, and they've chopped the lead down to five now. One tree down. After that play. Down by five, they'll go for two. He said this wasn't an offense built in a quick strike comeback curve, but now a couple of touchdowns. They look dead in that second quarter. Showed great patience to come back into this football game. Did not panic. Stuck to their guns with their offense. Under the back. Three receivers all to the right side as Teal rolls that way. Puts it into the end zone. Caught. It was Dennis Campbell, the freshman. Suddenly, Chiano's team down just a field goal. free with new chase freedom feel free to choose points for rewards like travel I'm free to do what I want. or feel free to choose cash back I'm free then feel free to change back again without losing a thing that's freedom that's chase freedom get it free at chase.com freedom Saturday night.
Night Football on ABC, Wake Forest, Florida State, or Texas, Kansas State, this Saturday at 8. Manhattan enjoying it. <laughs> Chopping away at that lead, down to three now. Teal again, who's lost just one game as a starting quarterback, high school and college, and that was to Louisville in that blowout last year. Trying to keep the crowd in it. We'll see what Baum can do now. Put three straight three and outs for this offense, which had been so sharp in the first half. Mito again short on the kickoff, and Spillman will have a chance at the three. Reverses direction. Look at the burst from Jawan Spillman. He's in the open. Spillman just corralled at the 30. What a crucial tackle by Zaire Kitchen who's had a couple of them on special teams tonight. A 31-yard return that could have been a lot longer. Wow, did he save a big gain. Spillman's been impressive. I want to go back to the last series. The confusion by Rutgers it, it appeared to be. And then the stop by Rankert. Remember that was third and one. Third and one for the Louisville defense. They're stopped. Punt the ball back to Rutgers, and that allowed Rutgers to go down for that big score. Will was a 51% third down conversion rate all season long. Just 3 of 12 tonight. This place is laughing now. Set. Now the confusion's on the offensive side. Ramel Meekins got him. This crowd right now, you see 44,000, you say, oh, compared to some of the bigger stadiums in the country, that's not a huge stadium. I can tell you right now, Chris and I travel every week. This is a loud stadium, and the offensive linemen couldn't hear the snap count. That's what allowed Meekins to get through. Fourth sack for the Knights. Once again, a hand in Brown's face. The flag flies incomplete. Meekins got there again. The flag was on the near side. As Gary Barnage, the tight end, was out of the pattern. Did they hold him? No, it's ineligible downfield on the Cardinals. And the mistakes continue to pile up for Petrino's offense. It's Patero Frierson. Ineligible receiver downfield. Number 80 on the offense. Their penalty is declined. Third down. Frierson, the linebacker, is up and walking off now. He was on one knee for a time. Appears to be okay. They decline the penalty. It's third and 18. These players are all given that sign, that chopping wood sign that Greg Schiano has built his team to believe about their work ethic. And he actually gives the Offensive player of the game the, gives an axe to the defensive player of the game and the special teams. This is a huge play for Brian Brown. Four receivers. And now Rutgers will call timeout. Didn't like what they saw from the Louisville offense. There's some mismatches maybe in the slot. Well, I think Greg Schiano called it himself. You can see he is fired up. He jumped up to the linesman and said, I need a timeout. I need a timeout. And this is Eric Foster giving that chopping wood sign before that third down almost happened. I bet that was a spirited halftime talk there in the Rutgers locker room. What do you think? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was. And, you know, you, you think about these two teams. All year we've talked about is Rutgers for real? Are the Scarlet Knights for real? And Louisville, after their win last week against West Virginia, getting up to number three in the BCS standings. If you're number three and you're on the road and you want to show America that you deserve to be at number three in the BCS standings, you find ways to win these kind of games. And Rutgers is playing for more than pride. They're playing for an opportunity maybe to get to a BCS goal themselves. They've held Louisville to 15 yards, Aaron, in this second half so far. Different scene in that Rutgers sideline? It certainly is, Chris. They just announced on the Jumbotron a new Rutgers Stadium record, attendance record here tonight. These fans, Kirk, are chopping wood. They are loud. And the word from the Louisville sidelines, guys screaming, pay attention, silent count. And as you guys mentioned, they're having problems hearing because of this crowd. The bottom of your screen there, you saw those bleachers, 2,000 extra seats, and those are all students in there that had those seats, and that's right behind where the Louisville offense is trying to operate on third and 18.
Plum. Long way to go for the first down. He'll get nowhere near it. Flyerson, Devin McCourtney able to chase him down. Once again, Louisville forced a three and out. Great pressure. They're going to bring the blitz. And they're going to play man coverage behind it. The man coverage held up. And this is as much about being a coverage sack as it is the pressure. Look at the great coverage downfield. And Brian Brom, who's not real elusive, again has to escape the pressure of Rutgers defense. A low kick. Willie Foster has a chance. And sports forward out near the 40. And now it's the Louisville defense that will have to step up. Rutgers with huge momentum. Saturday, ESPN and ABC team up to bring you the top two teams in the nation a week before the big showdown. ABC at 3.30 Eastern has Troy Smith and the Buckeyes traveling to Northwestern. ESPN has the Wolverines against Indiana at 3.30. With that countdown clock, Michigan and Ohio State, a week from Saturday in Columbus. Never met as undefeated one versus two teams. I think after last week's games for both teams that it, uh, it's important to build some confidence before they go into the big showdown coming up next Saturday. Those are big games for both teams. And Rutgers offense has some confidence now. Kenny Britt in motion. They handed to Rice. Who snaps forward for about five. Well now they're back in the game down only three. They can kind of stay in their comfort zone which well, means running Rice more. You know what but they I thought considering they were down 11 to start the third quarter that they've done a really good job of, of kind of staying true to who they are. It, you know they still have taken some chances. They have not completely left the game plan. They've showed some patience and I think that thought process from Greg Schiano and his offensive staff have allowed them to get back into this game without having to panic to do it. It's Underwood in motion and Teal straight back. Flag down over the middle. It's complete. Once again, running free is Britt. The flag seems likely to be on the offense. We'll check it. The gain is down to the 25, 33 yards pending the penalty. And it will come back. An illegal shift. But once again, well, Kenny Bread, who's been the weapon tonight in the passing game, wide open. Illegal motion, number 88 on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. This guy's a very big recruit for Shiano. He's going to be around and, and making plays here for years to come. Yeah, he is. And as a true freshman, he's just getting better and better and starting to understand what has to happen but these crossing routes behind the zone coverage from Louisville there are busts in the coverage and we've seen now the last couple times that Kenny Brett has tried to get downfield that he's had a lot of room to not only make a catch but to run with the football after the catch. Young Cordell Young another freshman in the game now on second and ten it's Leonard in motion and they flip it off to Young on the screen. But a good job of the Cardinal defense to snuff it out. Nate Harris wasn't buying the screen. Well, he picked it up right as soon as the ball was snapped. He could feel the quarterback teal backtracking off of his drop. And when you are a linebacker and you see a quarterback, a lot of times the offensive lineman will tip it. He's right in the middle of the field. Look how quickly he comes off of his read, and he comes right down to lower the boom on Cordell Young. That's great instincts there by number 10, Nate Harris. I think the personnel group tipped it off, too. You know they're going to use Young on a screen. They did it in the first half successfully. Inside of a minute now in the third quarter, third and eight. It's Leonard who stays in the block. Teal, pressure. And tracked down. Sacked by Amobia Koi. And this Rutgers drive snuffed out. Can't say it enough. A 19-year-old senior, mm. Okoy. Monster game last week against the Mountaineers. Senior. Huh? Yeah. It's just an amazing story. I, every time we do Louisville, and I, you go over all the notes, and you talk with the coaches, and you come down to Okoye, who's their best defensive lineman, and they talk to you about him being 19 years old and being so mature beyond 
his age. He had that big forced fumble against Steve Slayton last week. Makes a big sack there. The final 15 minutes on the banks of the Raritan. It's a three-point game. Number three, Louisville, hanging on, about to get the football back. Start off the fourth quarter. Rutgers only down by three. Kirk and Chris talking earlier about defensive tackle Amobi Okoye, 19-year-old senior, and what a leader he is for Louisville. Talk about an accelerated life for this guy. When he was two and a half years old, he started school in Nigeria. His mom was a principal out there. At 12 years old, his family moved to the United States, and he started high school as a freshman. He signed with Louisville when he was 15, and at 16, he became the youngest player in college football to play 13 games. Hey, guys, people ask him why he's doing so well this year. At 19, he says, I'm just aging. <laughs> he didn't act like 19, though. He's got a very mature presence about him, Aaron. Thanks. 20th start. His career tonight. So Rutgers has to boot it away as we begin the fourth quarter. Fumbled and fallen on is Spillman, who had the touchdown earlier, almost gives one back to the Scarlet Knights. Now we'll see if Shiano's defense can keep it up, Kirk, against Petrino in the offense. Clear edge for. That guy's crew in that third quarter is Louisville ran 13 plays and had 21 yards. Oh, they chopped a lot of wood there in the third quarter. Put a goose egg up for Brian Brown. You don't see that very often for the Louisville offense. Completely out of rhythm. I think they're going to go back to running the ball. But Smith goes nowhere. Very active Eric Foster who did talk a lot this week, talked up his own defense, and is starting to back it up. Well, they always talk about being 111th. Play is a group. That's a big, big factor for the Scarlet Knights. Look at all the Scarlet around the ball carrier that time. That's what they pride themselves on, outworking their opponent. And we're seeing a lot of that here in the second half. A lot of those guys in red were part of bad defense a couple years ago. They're 88th in scoring defense two years ago. 59th last year. Now second. And Louisville has to burn a timeout here. Brom is poised and as good a decision maker as there is in college football. But this oh, yeah. defense got the better of him in that quarter. Well, not only decision maker, his accuracy is uncanny. And tonight he has just been disrupted. And we saw it early after a great opening drive. They got pressure to him, pushed his offensive lineman back into the backfield. He threw a pick. He just always, he seems indecisive, back in the pocket. Things are covered. By the time he figures it out, the pressure gets to him. It's what Greg Schiano, whether he, when he was at uh, Miami of Florida as a defensive coordinator, now as a head coach, it's what he's been building here as he's been trying to build a defense that's confident and loves to believe in his system, which is a lot of activity, a lot of movement. Look what he's done to Brian Brom tonight. It's the same quarterback that last week against West Virginia was 19 of 26 for 354 yards. Notice the low percentage even on the short passes. They do have the two big pass plays of 45 and 39, but even in the underneath stuff, a very low percentage. And as much as I talked about the offensive line of Louisville last week, because we always get caught up in the quarterback and the running backs and the receivers on offense. I always like to go back to the play of the offensive lineman. And last week, they had a great game against the 3-3-5 scheme of, of Jeff Castillo in West Virginia. This week, they're getting out-hustled. It's a matter of who wants it and who's fighting. And we have seen this Rutgers defensive line out-fight Louisville in the trenches. Foster and Meekins in the interior especially have been tough in this third quarter, in the second half, I should say. Brown, this time had protection, now has a little running room and dives forward as the late flag comes flying in in the holding area. And that's what it is, holding on the Cardinals. That's frustrating because it had really no impact on the play. It was well behind where Brown was scrambling. But it'll march him back. Number 63 on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, repeat second down. The adjustments by Greg Schiano have been amazing. One of the plays that hurt Rutgers was a vertical receiver down the middle of the field in the first half. Look at the way this time Thompson runs step for step with Riley right down the middle of the field, and that's exactly 
where Brian Brom was looking. He thought he had a matchup that he liked with a receiver against a linebacker, but that time Thompson step for step with a quicker receiver, Jimmy Ryland. Devon Thompson, number 55, had the pick earlier. He's had a big ball game. On second and 19, they bring pressure again. Brom hit as he throws. It's oh, caught oh. by Louisville. Wow. Rudy came back in there. Brom was hammered on the blind side. And the ball was kind of wobbling in the air. Lucky to avoid a pick there. And this is an offensive line right now that is confused with the looks. I'm sure they're trying to make adjustments to the protection, but they're confused with the pressure. This time a safety, McCourty, gets in there untouched. The tight end let him come right through. They lose a yard on that, and now kind of a give-up call, and Smith will lose yardage on the draw. Rutgers is playing some defense, folks. This is a very, very good offense. It's going backwards in the second half. This is one of the scrappiest defenses I've seen all year. Five possessions, no first downs after halftime for Louisville. The second rate of offense in the country. Getchy's been very busy, the punter. And Rutgers down three should get Pretty good field position. It's a short kick. And he'll roll out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Brom has been frustrated as the brother-to-brother -brother conferences continue on the sidelines. It's Teal and the Knights will get the ball back down three. The Scarlet Knights can come off the mat and upset number three Louisville. It was 25 7 in the second quarter. Cardinals had all kinds of momentum, but this Rutgers defense has turned it around, and the offense has gotten them close. Still down three. Teal takes it, steps up, hit as he throws. Incomplete. Rice got a hand in it over the middle as Teal picks himself up slowly. Still seeing this Rutgers offense relying on Mike Teal, believing in Mike Teal's leadership to try to get them to the eventual either tying score or winning score or go ahead score. Because, Chris, if, for people not familiar, just tuning in with Rutgers, this is a team that relies heavily on running the football. And tonight they've gone against that, trying to give Teal some help to try to take the pressure off of Ray Rice. It's Rice who gets it on the draw. Picks his way up the middle. Ray Rice. First down yardage near midfield. You can see the patience, the vision of Rice there. He waited for his blockers. Kind of hid behind the offensive lineman. Nice run. Yeah, it was a great job of hiding at 5-9 behind the offensive line. But how about his leading blocker? Right there, 23. I love to see Brian Leonard, a senior who came back for his, his senior year. One of the more versatile backs coming into this year, but hasn't had a chance to get the ball much because 27, the true sophomore, Ray Rice has taken most of the load. But Brian Leonard, a true yeah. team player. Never blocked in his life until yeah, this year. Yeah, he's become he's a much better blocker. Opening up the hole that time for his teammate and partner, Ray Rice. And it's Leonard in motion once again. The lead blocker, Rice once again, finding you up the middle. William Gay on the stop at 16 more yards, and this is the typical Rutgers offense. And here he is again, picking up a block this time. Watch him coming right towards you. Picks up a block on the outside linebacker. Preston Smith steps up. He thinks he's got to play, but how about that? Teammate, these guys have become great friends. That block again turns Ray, Ru Ray Rice loose for another big game. 82 yards now for Rice and a couple of touchdowns. He's not done carrying the ball. <laughs> He's got some momentum going. This time they fake it to him, and Teal fires on first down. Had a man wide open. Tyquan Underwood kind of cut back toward the center of the field. He was covered by Rod Council. Teal threw it outside. When you see back-to-back -back plays with the wheelhouse there running the football to Ray Rice, even though it's not a great fake, the linebackers come way up. And if he has time to throw, look at the huge hole that he had in man coverage with Underwood beating his man. He just needed a little bit more time. And even 
still, Teal would love to have that one back to be able to convert. The play might have gotten an arm on him as he was throwing the football, too, to make that off target. Second and ten. Guards jump and get back. Rice on the toss. Smack straight ahead. Preston Smith, the linebacker, met him again, but Rice won that little battle. I found it interesting sitting around talking with the players yesterday. Ray Rice is getting all the accolades, third in the nation in rushing, but Aaron, it's Brian Leonard, who's a senior. He's kind of the workhorse. He's had to step aside and be a great teammate and a great uh, kind of a big brother to the younger back. Absolutely, Herb. Not really the way he thought he would end his college career, but he said, you know what? I'm not getting the carries. I'm not scoring as much as I wanted to, but we were losing when I was doing that. Now we're winning, and now I'm enjoying it. On third and three, short hop by Teal. I'm trying to get the ball to Dennis Campbell out there, and now down three. Shiana will trot out Jeremy Ito. Ito, very low key guy as he continues to pile up great stats as a kicker. He's got great range, very accurate, and will be one of the great kickers Rutgers has ever had. 46 yards. This is from 46. He has a long of 53, so plenty of leg to knock this through. This for the tie. He's got it. Straight point for Rutgers. We're dead even. 10 13 to play. 500 yards a game to virtually nothing after halftime. And the offense has responded with 18 points. I'm stunned that Rutgers has been this smothering against an offense that we've seen, Kirk, one of the best in the country. And this is anybody who's questioned Rutgers validity and whether or not they are a team that deserves to be 15th in the country. This is not oh boy Louisville should have killed Rutgers. What's wrong with Louisville. This is a good football team tonight that we're seeing from the Scarlet Knights. And finally Ito little adrenaline able to power the ball through the end zone for a touchback. He's had trouble tonight and it helped create Oh, a kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, look at the, look at the drives here. This is the last six drives by Louisville. That's not good. How about the last four? Three and out. Major confusion for Bobby Petrino, Jeff Brom, and the offensive line. I just can't believe all the negative yards. A lot of that's been penalties, but a lot of that's been penetration. How does Bobby Petrino this time, after the last six drives, respond? What does he go to here against Greg Schiano? Smith the setback, but Brom's throwing on first down if he can get away from the pressure. He'll tuck it and run it, and a nice gain. So a real test now for Brian Brom. I think it's important to, to really show that you've got great poise when things like this happen, when you don't have a great night. Here's his quarterback coach, an older brother. He's been in his face all night long questioning him. And I might tell, if I were Brian, I might tell, hey, hey, big brother, let's go into the offensive line and work with them a little bit to get them to help me out. Take some of that energy over to them. Smith is smacked. Good job by Devon Thompson helping out Foster and Meekins on the stop. Aaron talked earlier about this isn't X and O's and schemes, Kirk. This is just a defense you know, being energized and just playing hard and fast. They play hard, they play fast, and it's about the confidence. It's just such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up to now where they believe in one another. And there are great teams out there that have great individual players. And for those of you that don't buy into the team concept, Rutgers defense is an example. If you buy into a team, how much it can benefit you. Four and three. Brom's going to throw over the middle, caught first down. Only three of 14 on third down before that, but Arudia collects it for eight in traffic. Yeah, that, Crucial. Yeah, it was a huge play there. That time, Brom was able to just stop the bleeding, come up with a conversion to move the sticks to see if they can stop this momentum that's clearly been in favor of the Scarlet Knights. But Chris, this, this, this Rutgers defense, they're not going to have any All-Americans on this defense. 
They just play as a group and united. That's how they're able to stop a great offense like uh, like Louisville. It's Brown again short overthrown. That one was on the QB. He was looking for Douglas who is pretty well defended by Courtney Green but throw high. Brian Brown got his feet turned. He got settled. This is something that his brother was talking to him about earlier. Getting your feet set. He actually moves his feet right into the direction of his target. Perfect alignment. It's just another example of a quarterback as good as Brian Brown is who can't get comfortable in the pocket. We've seen Brady Quinn who's a great quarterback go through this at times this year. Sometimes when you get out of rhythm, it becomes tough on your accuracy. Anthony Allen goes out in the pattern. Brown has to escape once again. A nice job to get positive yardage because the Scarlet Knights were all over him quickly. That was Eric Foster again with the quick pressure. What happens is a quarterback has an ability to, once you get into rhythm, you almost throw without even thinking. And Brian Brom right now is thinking about that pressure. He may not be actually looking at it, but he is feeling it. Tyler Palco, who's a great quarterback, when he played Rutgers, did the same thing. He felt that heat, and it's enough to get you out of sync. Third and five. Again, the short completion. First down, cutting back into Rutgers territory is Colby Smith. They use their backs as receivers a lot. 16 yards for Smith and another third down conversion. Talked a whole game about taking chances by blitzing, by bringing pressure against the Louisville offense that can score within one play. If you're not on top of every receiver and every back and you leave one empty and Baum has time, he'll find that open man. And that time he did for the first. Ray Rice says, get me the football back. But a couple of crucial conversions for Louisville. They'll run it to Smith on first down. This is a Louisville offense that is capable of, despite four straight three and outs, a lot of negative yardage, you have methodically moving down the field and taking the lead and leaving Rutgers not much time. But on a normal night, you would say that, that they are capable of methodically moving the ball down the field. It would be uncharacteristic of what we've seen tonight. The big play to still be there. The big play threat against this man pressure from Rutgers still has to be a factor. They can score in a hurry. You look to Douglas in the slot. Now Brown just has to check it up. Wow ahead for a very short game. There's no way to execute an offense when the quarterback's in the shotgun. By the time he takes the snap, he takes one step back and he starts to step up because he's feeling the pocket close in on him. Once again, down on the field is Foster. Boy, he he has been so strong tonight. He and Ramel Meekins, we talked about the undersized tackles who just play with such high motors, have really had their way with the interior part of that Louisville offensive line lately. This is a helmet collision there. Great to see him already up and walking off the field. And Chris, it's the intangibles of Eric Foster as a junior. That has as much to do with his the value that he brings to the table. He he missed most of 05 as you talked about with the ACL active co-captain as a junior. Hopefully for the Rutgers team he'll have a chance to get back out on the field because you said it he's been a big part of their success tonight. Four hurries seven tackles half a sack for the guy from Homestead. Shiano's former turf down there as a Miami assistant. One more key third down for Brown. Once again, pressure on him as he throws. It's caught, but not a first down. Jimmy Riley got his hands on it, but he couldn't twist for the first down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here. This time from the, the boundary side, the weak side. And the only route that he has a time to throw is a four-yard route. He can't wait on the, the 15 or 18-yard route because the pressure is in there well before he has a chance to be patient and look downfield. Not what they were looking for, but they got a couple of first downs and may be able to, to knock it down in there. If Getchy can pin Rutgers back, he's approaching five and a half minutes to play in regulation. Very high kick, no returner back there, and Getchy gets a nice bounce. It 
and it spins backwards to the 10 yard line. And Rutgers will start actually at the 8, 92 yards from the end zone. Trying to beat a ranked team for the first time since 88. Never beaten a team. Ranked as high as number three, Louisville, though. Not even close. Last week at Louisville, for Rutgers, you knew this would be a game that folks around here would talk about for a long, long time, regardless of whether they won or lost. A little longer if they win, especially if they can come from 25-7 down and get this done. 18 straight points in this game. The team that hasn't beaten a ranked opponent since 88. And it's Rice. Picking his way for a short game. Yeah, it wasn't just that Louisville had a 25-7 lead, had all the momentum. It was the way they took the lead. So many kinds of plays that you think would just be a shot of the solar plexus of Rutgers. The more I'm, I'm sitting here watching this game unfold, the more I'm gaining more and more respect for Rutgers. And uh, it just reminds me of a team that is so hungry and so determined, no matter what's thrown at them, they just keep fighting, and they just will not go away. And now they put themselves in a position with under five minutes to go to still win this game. And now it's Rice running right. Remember, he's so strong as the game wears on. He's pretty fresh tonight. Not nearly his usual workload, and we'll see if this Louisville defense can stand up to it. Two carries and a quick first down. Well, they've heard all week that... They're the Achilles heel to this Louisville team that's put up at number three in the BCS standings, and the game is right in front of them. They've got Rutgers pinned down, and they did have them pinned down inside the 20 before that first down. Game's in their hands. Ray Rice over the 100-yard mark. Play action. Teal tips. Caught. Across the 30. Staying inbounds. There's Tyquan Underwood. And he will have first down yardage. Love the call on first and ten. It looks like it's going to be close enough for a measure. Mike Teal. We've talked about him all night. How the game would come down to his ability to make enough plays in the passing game to take some of the pressure off of Rice in the running game. Look at the stats. You don't think it's he's a big well, yeah, no, for 20. Well, 7 to 20 yeah. with about five drops. I mean, he's had, he's had a lot of drops tonight. But he's also come up with enough big plays to allow them to go back to running Ray Rice, which is what they want to do. But now with four minutes to go, there is plenty of time to emphasize the running game. And there better be some concern in that Louisville sideline for its defense. Yeah, I, mean, I'm not, I don't want to pretend to say that Mike Teal has been the difference in the game. We've got 278 yards of offense only for Rutgers and 271 for Louisville. This has been a defensive game. But in this second half, we've seen Teal make just enough plays and prove that his reputation of being a winner in high school and in college was kind of showing tonight. Rice. And a good job there of Earl Heyman. Stopping Rice, but even what looks like a kind of a nothing play picks up almost five. As they continue to eat up yardage and get out of dangerous territory, the clock continues to go down at Jeremy Ito, who already hit a 46-yarder to tie the game, has the range from over 50 yeah. if it comes down to that. If we get to the 35 of Louisville, which is about 30 more yards, they're in range. Rice stopped for a loss. Good penetration by Malik Jackson. Like, I know that this is part of their offense, but I, but the game well, on line, well, it's not so much that. It's the, it's not a handoff here. This is a, a pitch, yeah. and a not a quick, your, a quick not, one. not your traditional toss sweep. This is a, almost like a, a handoff pitch. That Ray Rice handled very well, but he got quickly. Yeah, it was a risk, and he yeah. got hit as soon as he held on to the ball. Well, they got a long way to go to get an Ito's range, and it's third and six. Underwood in motion. Leonard is the setback. They look in the flats, and the seniors got it. And he's got rope. Fair and Leonard. Very near field goal range inside the Louisville 40. That's a huge part of their offense. They hadn't been tonight. They saved it for a good time. 26 yards. It, 
it's a nice, we'll call it a rub route, because I'm an offensive guy, but Tyquan Underwood comes from the outside and basically picks Nate Harris, not allowing him to get out to the running back, Brian Leonard. And not only does he catch the football, but because Harris gets caught up in traffic, there's no one there to pick up Leonard, and he scrambles all the way downfield inside the 40-yard line. Yeah, the first catch for the leading receiver coming in. What a huge time for it. And now they're just really you know, close to Ito's range and inside of two minutes to go. Tio wants to make no mistakes at this point. Well, they have a chance now to pick up yards, eat a little bit of clock, and get the ball to the middle of the field with one timeout left. They'll have to save that to try to get the ball to the middle of the field for the field goal opportunity. Let's see what's on the Applebee's weekend menu. Following this collision of undefeateds in the Big East. Arkansas has an important game. And the Big Ten teams, Ohio State and Michigan, just one step away from that big collision in Columbus. You foresee any trouble there? Of course, we didn't last week either. Yeah, and I, I think that the timing of, I don't want to call them close calls, but the timing of, of Michigan allowing their, their backups to get in and make Ball State hang around a little bit longer than they wanted to is perfect for their trip to Bloomington. The same could be said for Ohio State. First game that they haven't looked dominant in the second half, and I'm sure that has their attention. Both teams, I think, will be focused on what has to and needs to be done this Saturday. Well, there were five unbeatens coming in. These two of them, of course, Ohio State, Michigan, two of them, Boise State. One of them was going to fall by the wayside tonight. It looked like it was going to be Rutgers early. And now, folks, all over the country looking in and hoping the Scarlet Knights can pull out a victory here, a huge comeback, knock Louisville out of the BCS contention. That would be a huge step forward for teams in the SEC, oh. for teams like Texas and well, Cal and USC. I was going to say, if people around the country, fans and players, Florida, Texas, Cal, USC, Notre Dame, everybody now has a shot to get into the party if this ends up happening. Think they're paying attention? <laughs> yeah. It's Campbell in motion. They keep it on the ground and breaking free is Rice. Ray Rice inside the 20. And they're well within field goal range. This drive started at their eight-yard line. Some great blocks in the trenches here. Sam Johnson, the tight end, picks up a great block that actually provides enough of a seam there for Rice to get through. What's amazing here, Chris, is you're talking about eight white jerseys. The ninth white jersey, and Gavin Smart walks up as the ball is snapped, and they still end up springing one for a big gain into nine men up in the box. Rice with 69 yards in the fourth quarter so far. He'll get it again, of course. Bulls forward. Down near a minute, and a timeout is now taken. It's a timeout on the Louisville side. So Jeremy Ito comfortably within his range for a field goal that would cap an incredible comeback here for the Scarlet Knights. I don't know, despite the defensive timeout by Louisville Kirk, I don't know if they have any chance to get the ball back here. If Shannon wants to run a couple more plays instead of no. a field goal, they're not going to get the ball back. No, they'll, they'll probably end up calling their last timeout here on second down. And then Greg Schiano will get the ball put as close as he can to the middle of the field. Let the clock wind down as far as it can go down. Call his timeout. Bring out Ito for the potential game-winning field goal. Talked about, you know, confidence and belief, Kirk. I'm not sure how many people in this place, if they were telling you the truth, really had the belief the Rutgers could come from behind. 25-7 down. Louisville moving up and down the field. Their own team breaking down on special teams. How many believers were there back in the second quarter? <laughs> Look at this place. 25-7 with an offense that's ranked 114th in the nation in throwing the football. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, you know, they're never going to get as much respect as they think they deserve, but they could get a whole bunch more than they had tonight if they can finish this. They give it to Rice, and he just plows straight ahead inside the 15. Once again, Louisville's defense spending a timeout. It'll be third now. It'll be probably 20 seconds, maybe a little bit more than 20 seconds left by the time 
Again, none left. We see so. a, a timeout by Rutgers. They're going to get this ball again. Run left, get the ball to the middle of the field. Maybe even just have the quarterback take the snap. Just move the move the uh, the pile. Just move it to the left by about five yards. See him not built for a comeback in an unfamiliar position this season. Trying to create the biggest win ever. They beat some ranked teams. Teams ranked you know, 15th in the teens, but never a team ranked as high as number three, Louisville and Michael Bush. Pure frustration, unable to contribute to his team's efforts tonight after that broken ankle. Watching another running back on the other side, Ray Rice. Power this team down the field. 42 yards on this drive, Kurt. On seven carries. That's six yards a carry. And have to reiterate, he hasn't had a great night. Going on a drive where they needed him. Started at their own nine-yard line. He's able to get into position there, Chris, and with it going up against a nine-man front. Great job by the line. Looks like they'll follow your suggestion. Teal just takes the snap, moves to the center of the field, and falls down at the 15. So the field goal attempt for Jeremy Ito, the junior, all the way from Redlands, California, to the banks of the Raritan, and a chance to provide the winning points in the biggest victory in Rutgers' career. It'll be about a 33-yarder. Said about 20 seconds. It's it's going to be right right about at 20, maybe 21. They call the timeout with 21 seconds to play. You know, Shiano was criticized early in his tenure here. He was the youngest head coach in one end when he took over for some time management issues, not finishing games well, managing games well. He's he's learned a lot in a lot of aspects, but that's one of them. We've talked all night about the respect these two teams we're trying to achieve and one thing needs to be talked about hopefully tomorrow around the water coolers in the offices about the job that Greg Schiano has done here he inherited a program that I thought it was interesting that hadn't quite hit rock bottom in his first two years it did hit rock bottom once he built the philosophy and the vision to teach his players and his recruits we're going to have the facilities. We're going to get the recruits. We're going to play in big games. It's going to matter. You can make a difference in helping turn Rutgers football around. These players who are here bought into a vision. It's easy to see it now. But when he was selling, it wasn't like this. These players deserve this opportunity. And now Jeremy Ito. Anthony Cowley to hold. Mark Harris to snap it. For the lead. Got very quiet in here. Missed it. A flag is down. A flag is down before the ball was snapped. Ito hooked it. Louisville is offsides. Wow. <laughs> Louisville offsides. offsides. Number 21. A reprieve for Ito. Very reliable kicker who hooked that one. William Gay, who's one of the best defensive players on the Louisville team. Oh, Kirk, and he snuck off on the, on the left end. Had nothing yep. to do with Had any not, attempted block. Not at all. You could see Teal's reaction after the miss. What a mental mistake for William Gay. And Ito, another chance now. This time it'll be from 28 yards. <laughs> Mulligan. We should ask our expert in the booth here, Mike Black, who kicked at Boise State. About how it helps you here this second go round. Typically, kickers, after they miss it and get a second shot, they, they tend to relax. He has to keep his head down. Last time he pulled his head up.
Greg Schiano saying, hey, we're still chopping wood. We've got a three-point lead with 13 seconds to go, but he wants his guys to, to focus on finishing this thing. But what a finish to the drive as Ito makes good on the mulligan. And Rutgers marches from their nine all the way down to set up a chip shot. Thanks mainly to their, their stud, Ray Rice, and that offensive line that wore down Louisville's defense in the second half. A stunner, really. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, it, we just been... Uh, just been blown away to see this Rutgers team in the heart that they have played with tonight to be down 25 to 7 against this Louisville offense that coming into the night we talked about it in my opinion felt this might be the most explosive offense in the country and to get down like that to have a chance to get back in to never give up this game to me epitomizes the job that Greg Schiano has done at Rutgers this is it in a nutshell down 25 to 7 against all odds probably a lot of people tuned away came back to see how they were doing <laughs> they're 13 seconds away from knocking off the number three team in the country I'd be very surprised if they give Spillman a chance to return the kickoff he had the touchdown earlier yeah I mean football invented here 1869 they got it started against Princeton but they've waited a long time for a moment like this could they seize it didn't look like it in the early going falling in a deep hole but what a response the night that no one New Jersey who follows football will ever forget. And now just 13 seconds away, an agonizing loss this will be for Louisville unless they can conjure a miracle here. They had their moment a week ago, stepped up, survived it against West Virginia. Maybe, maybe the emotional drain had something to do, if you're searching for reasons on the Louisville side, something to do with the second half performance here. Most of the guys in red, but if you're searching for answers on the Louisville side, right. Why they could never get it going, that might be one. Well, they will kick it deep. They will kick it deep, and Spillman will have a chance. That's a surprise. He's got some room. Jawan Spillman with one second to go does get it across the 40, and now the students come out of the end zone emptying on the field. There's still a second to play. The Rutgers player is trying to turn the fans around. And now they're coming at it from both sides. Hold on, this game is not over. You don't want to get a 15-yard penalty to give Brian Brown that much more of a, a chance at this Hail Mary if they can get the snap off. Remember, the game clock will start as soon as the referee and the, uh, the umpire and everybody <laughs> restores order. To two seconds. They'll have time. Second, two seconds. So they'll, they'll have, have a chance to, to run people down. Look at Rutgers has six defensive players, 25 or more yards from the line of scrimmage. Three of them are down inside the 10. <laughs> Coach just he just needs two more seconds for the win of his life. Well, he wants them to start the clock, but these the crew is doing a great job making sure everybody's in place before they start start the game clock. Perfect job. Whistle, snap, final play. Brown. Hit and sacks. A fitting ending to Rutgers' biggest win ever. begin to describe what it means to the guys in red. It's okay to smile, coach. Bye-bye BCS for Louisville. And a big party in Piscataway.
It's okay to cry. He should be emotional. What he's got on his eye black there is a tribute to an older cousin who was killed in a car accident eight years ago. The closest thing he had to kind of a father figure. There's his mom. Oh, man. He had to believe this kind of thing was possible becoming a Rutgers. He took the chance to come here and be a focal point of this turnaround. And it's, uh, what a story. What a story for this program. <laughs> I think this will help almost, recruiting. He almost bit. didn't want to allow himself to smile at the end, did he? Oh. <laughs> There's the reaction. He's had a dream, and he just lived a dream right here. And look how quickly he composed himself. He knows there's more wood to chop. Rutgers has, has knocked off the third-ranked Louisville Cardinals and ended Louisville's BCS dreams. Now Rutgers will have to join the conversation. 9 0. How high can they go? Well, for all the cynics that question the Big East, and a couple years ago, I was one of the biggest cynics of the Big East when they lost their three powerhouses. It's time to back off. Respect this conference. Rutgers, Louisville, West Virginia. You go down, there's great depth in this conference, and tonight is a huge win for Rutgers and a really big win for the Big East. Well, the BCS has opened up 21 straight points for Rutgers and the biggest win in school history. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Aaron Andrews and Kirk Herbstreit and our entire production team here at Rutgers, I'm Chris Fowler. Sports Center is next. Plenty of coverage to come from Rutgers.